It looks so weird with a beard. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. If you want, just uh, here. anybody want to make fun of me or something in the meantime? What do you guys think of this beard that I have right now while I've been uh, in hiding? Good, no good. Should I get rid of it? I, I think I'm gonna get rid of it soon. I'm not. I don't know if I feel like a beard guy. You know. I do like the idea that now that beards are like not in style that I decided to grow one because I just like to go against anything trendy, sort of. <clears throat> Adam, if it doesn't work this time, I'll bring you in. Big Gre Greg, I got my water right here, right here for you. Yeah, yeah, nah, yeah. <laughs> that impression was fantastic. You know, I'm just waiting on Justin to come back in or whatever. Um, I messaged him, he didn't, I don't know if he got it yet or whatever. How do you join? Well, let me just see. I'll definitely bring you in. Let me just, uh, yeah, like the mullet. Why ponytail it tonight? It's hard to see. Uh, Adam, as soon, let me just see what goes on with this. And if not, I'll, you'll be the next person I bring on. I just, uh, we've been talking about doing this for a while. So it's kind of at that point where it's like, let's just finally have this live chat and uh, talk about it. I I'm just trying to get more people to talk live in general because all this, you know, like messaging, text message back and forth for uh, on Facebook, no one's going to change their mind that way. That water bottle's going to suffer. You better believe it, you know? I got to get my water filter fixed, unfortunately. It's, uh, it broke. Um, anyway, um, fuck was I saying? Uh, but yeah. So, so, so in the meantime, while we're waiting, beard or no beard, what do you think? Dave Martell, what's up, dude? Uh, Dave, if uh, if this doesn't work out, if you want to, we want a live chat. We could do that too. You can talk about whatever you want, mysticism, borders, whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. I want to talk to you anyway. Uh, where is this guy? Yo, Greg, just to play, just to stop, cuck. Just, Greg, just to play up your uh, your impression. Can you message Justin Ryan Ryan for me and tell him uh, tell him I'm ready? I didn't. Beard. Where is he? Uh... But, well, I just went to the ball, but it's a new beard, you know? I don't really, I'm not really a big beard guy, personally, but, you know, we'll see. Is that a mustache or a twat tickler? Uh, I, I wish it was. Uh, you know, I haven't got laid in a while, so it's, uh, it's about that time. Um, I will debate the shit out of this debate. <laughs> You're on the same side as me. Uh, fuck. Where is he? John Bellafiore, what's up, man? Um... Where's the pizza? I had some last night, actually. Uh, I kind of let myself go ever since Mexico, because I've been in So I ate, like, fucking mad pepperoni, uh, not pepperoni, uh, Sicilian pizza is what I meant. Um, which I normally don't eat, but it was good. 15 minutes? All right, yeah, well, I'm supposed to be debating this other dude, but, like, definitely feel free to jump back in or whatever, and we'll talk. Uh, is he coming? Justin, where are you, bro? Oh. So in the meantime, what else is up, people? How are you? I got like 20, 15, 20 people watching. How's everything? <laughs> What's up, Brian? How are you? A man wears a beard like a lady has long hair. That's one way to look at it. Uh, where's Justin? Come on, guy. Where is he? You just had some actually, yeah, frozen, fuck that frozen pizza shit, that shit sucks. I don't eat frozen, I don't eat any pizza that's not New York pizza, I don't care if it's Domino's or what. It's not New York pizza, I'm not interested, period, that's it. it it's a world of difference. Any other pizza I've had anywhere else was terrible. It's like a good joke. Oh, here we go, all right. Let's hope it works this time. Thoughts on nationalism? I think nationalism is just a form of mind control. Uh, it's just the way, it's just the way, like, same, there he is. Can you hear me? <laughs> can, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I do, I do. And it doesn't seem to be echoing. I think we've done it. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> so just... To do to begin with? Yeah, just, just for anybody watching, like, just so, because everyone always has problems with this. 
Uh, from what I understand is that you have to both go in with the headphones on or no headphones, and then it gets has this like tickly kind of sound in the background. But this is the best way to do it. But um, all right. So I guess anyway, well, glad to have you here. Uh, I'm just trying to get more people in the whole anarchist community in general to start talking live because I don't really feel anybody ever changes their mind when we just like text night one another. And I kind of gave up on doing stuff like that a long time ago because a I'm really bad at typing and my grammar's terrible and uh i'm just more of like a spoken word type of guy so um all right i guess i'll just i'll just start off like this so you mean to tell me that you don't think that this world is run by inter interdimensional reptiles you don't think that what is wrong with you sir <laughs> um i don't i don't know if if the world is ran by shape-shifting reptilians but right <laughs> I don't. I don't think we can convince people of that. So I don't think it's an effective way to uh, try to influence the world. No, right, right. I'm. I'm just being silly anyway. I don't necessarily think that or whatever. But uh, I guess. Uh, so where, where do you want to start off? Do you want to start with the uh, the morality thing? You want to talk about the cult or the Darwin thing? I'll leave that up to you. Uh, let's start with morality since we've been going at that for a while. And sure, I, sure. I think we should start with start with definitions. Okay. Um, all right. So when I when I say when I say morality is objective, what I, what I'm saying is that there are certain behaviors that are always wrong, no matter what. And based on that, I think morality is objective because if something's always wrong, then it's objective. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, it, that, that's just to, to me, it's as simple as that. Like, same thing with gravity. Like, I just look at gravity as objective because no matter how many times you drop something, it's going to fall, unless there's like some way to suspend it, but that still doesn't really have anything to do with the fact that it's always around us, you know? Okay. So the definition of objective I have is not influenced by personal feelings or opinions. It, it's a consideration of facts. That's basically what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, that's right. That's what I mean. Sure. Yeah, it doesn't have to do with my opinion. It just is. Two plus two is objectively four every time. Okay. And subjective is influenced by personal feelings, tastes, and opinions. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So how do you, uh, how do you avoid having your personal feelings, tastes, and opinions influence your thinking process? Well, no matter what, everyone's personal taste and, you know, and whatever, well, basically whatever you just said is going to apply to everything everyone does at, at all times. Uh, I understand that my, like, like my thoughts aren't necessarily objective, but I can align my thoughts with certain things that are objective, you know, like take, take like, again, two plus two is four. I could say that it's, you know, 1106, but it just isn't like the, the evidence is there. I could say whatever I want, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. You, you understand? Well, two plus two equals four. If we both agree on what the symbol of a two represents, right? Yeah. Well, like the universe, the universe isn't dictated by uh, by our equations. Our equations explain our observations. Um, I, I suppose so. I, I mean, I'm not 100 percent sure, but like, I'll take your word for it. I, I just mean like like if there's two sticks and we took two more sticks, there would be four sticks. I don't really care what symbol if we're using no, Roman numerals, if we're using Chinese or, or like our typical, you know, the two that I think of in my head. I just mean that I know if there's, if you have two sticks and we take two more sticks, that would be four sticks. And that's not up to my opinion. That's objectively provable. You know, again, you could say that it isn't, but again, like you could say whatever you want. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean, make that it means right. it's true. You know? So right. what my, yeah, go ahead. So we can both say whatever we want, but if we don't agree on what two is, the equation means nothing. So I'm going, I kind of anticipated you were going to bring two plus two equals four up. Okay. So I wanted to go, go over how uh, variables affect equations. Okay? okay. So I can change, we can keep the two, the two and the four, but I could change this whole thing to being untrue with just two little lines. Two plus negative two plus two does not equal four, right? No, okay. So but that wouldn't, they wouldn't all the same value, though. That's not the same thing. Well, they're all the same things, but consideration of other facts. What do we do with this information? It changes things. 
Well, yeah, but we're, but right, you just changed it. Therefore, it's not the same thing that you showed me in the fir first place. Therefore, it's it's different. So that wouldn't apply. You know what I mean? You, you know, like someone someone asked me in, in another debate. Um, uh, it was something about like the the LGBT thing or whatever about an example I used, and he asked if you know, well, what if that didn't happen? And then I just said, well, I just wouldn't use that as an example. You know, if we're changing, I mean, we agree on the same definitions, right? Like I'm assuming that you agree that two, when we're talking about two, we mean the same thing, right? Yeah, and it's true because we agree on it. It's not true if we disagreed on it. It would be, uh, it, it's well, math is a language that we created for. Well, it's understood is what I'm saying. What, what, right. What I'm saying is it's it's understood though. Like like we're making the same thing. Like I, I mean, I could always argue in another realm, like the multiverse or limbo or some non-existent or po possibly existent thing. Things vary there, but I just mean in the physical three D reality that we currently inhabit. Like. You know, generally, like what we learned in school, the value of two I'm talking about, like, you know, if, if we two plus two would be four, you know, again, like, you, you know, I'm just trying to, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but we don't understand math because the universe gave us math. We understand math because we created it as a language. Okay. okay. Well, what does that have so, to do with what we're talking about? I don't know, because you brought it up. I'm saying mathematics doesn't really have anything to do with morality. So it's I'm just saying subjective well, I, variables change things. They change how you think about things, and they change the outcomes and the answers and all that matters. As no, no I, I, agree, I agree with that. I'm just saying that, like, so the reason I brought up math specifically was just because if something is always it, it, always the same, then I would say it was objective. Like my argument, I always always use because to me it's a very simple one: is rape is always wrong. Are you able to give me a scenario where rape would be the moral and righteous thing to do? And no one ever seems to be able to do that. Or do you well, have I've been able, yeah, I've been able to do it a number of times in a number of different ways, and I, I'm not sure that you hear my answer. Okay. Um, because first, first I will say that you're you're creating a straw man. I've never claimed, nor does my belief that values are subjective imply that rape could ever be moral. It doesn't imply that. I don't think it's the right thing to do under any circumstance. Right. But if you wanted to push me for a for an analogy, uh, Vanessa came up with one for you where the guy who uh, molested his two kids, mm -hmm. he's going to go to jail. And if he gets, you know, pounded in the ass, I couldn't care less. Now, I would agree. Is it is it moral? I don't know. Well, no, I wouldn't I got, say it. But it's better, he's saying it's better to kill him than it I've is. I've got a question for you. Yeah. What's, what's, what's more immoral, rape or murder? What's more? I would, I would say murder, actually. I have a joke about mm -hmm. that, uh, actually. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I would say murder because you're just taking someone's life fully. Uh, they're both completely immoral. I don't, but if I guess I had to weigh them, I would probably say murder because you've taken the person's life. So I would say that's probably worse. But what, what, what I mean, though, like in general, is just that if certain behaviors are always wrong and everyone agrees, that, I mean, it doesn't really even matter that everyone agrees, but like I've never met anyone that says that rape is moral. So if that behavior is wrong in every situation, it would be objectively wrong. You understand? Like it, to me, it's just that simple. It's like, again, the difference between rape and sex is sex is consent. Once you break that person's natural rights in the first place, then, you know, th th then that's what makes it immoral. You, you know, like it's that that's what it is. The consent. But sex isn't cons isn't consent. Uh, that's just sex doesn't. Uh, it doesn't need consent as. Uh, what I'm trying to say. Um, rape obviously implies no consent, right? Right. That's why it's rape. Right, but mm -hmm. the objective act is is just sex. So obviously, there's one one uh, one way that we determined is bad, and one way that we determined is good. But the objective act is sex. So, right, it's the intent. It's the intent is right. what makes it evil. Right, but I agree. But we put those we put those labels on there for our well being. We put those labels on there so that we could say, this is what's okay and this is what's not okay. But it, but it, it doesn't matter if we labeled it or not. You can just see from the biological reaction, uh, you know, you could call it something, and you could, let, let's say you made up your own language and we made up a different word for rape and you went and you, whatever word you decided, attempted to do that word and rape the girl. You get the exact same reaction no matter what you call it. 
because it's the behavior that's wrong. what about when the girl reacts? Well, that's my in point. The, in the natural world, which you're, you're appealing to nature, right? Uh, I'm just appealing to common sense. Uh, you know, I guess if you want to call it that, sure. But, you know, to, well, to me... You're, you're appealing to facts, right? That's yes, to the best I understand them. Sure. Okay, so in, in the world that we currently live in, Every mm -hmm. single a every single animal except for humans rapes exclusively. There's no like I agree. M making love or whatever you want to call it. It's right. just that's just reproduction. I hear dolphins get them. freaky. Actually, I, I do hear dolphins get kind of freaky, yeah. and squeaky even. <laughs> uh, that that's true, right? But I, like for example, do do you hold yourself to the same standard as the animal kingdom? Why don't you go around raping women, you know, or anyone else? Why? You know, is it? Ah. Let me ask you: Is it just because of the threat of law, or do you find that your conscience tells you not to? Because I don't give a fuck about laws. I do whatever I want. I just follow my conscience. But my conscience has prevented me from ever raping any woman ever. It's not because I'm afraid to go to jail. I'm not afraid to go to jail. I just know that it's wrong. You know All right. Well, you know the consequences <laughs> of your actions, and so you know that that's bad. And I'm sure you do have a conscience, which is what I would call subjectivity. It's your brain telling you what you think, and right. you know it's wrong. And if you would right. tell me, uh, you know, I don't believe in laws, but your argument is natural law. So you, you are appealing to law, and I'm appealing to our brains can reason yeah. our way to this. Let me just jump in real quick. Uh, what's it called? J just to confirm something, because I'm actually probably going to stop using the term natural law because it really seems to confuse everyone. Uh, when I say natural law, I, I just mean cause and effect. Another term for it would be like consequentialism. Uh, I don't mean like the Darwinian theory of evolution or anything like that. I mean that like when you when you do some, certain acts have negative behaviors, you know what I mean? That you're always going to get a negative response from. Like rape would be one of them. So uh, what I'm saying is, is I don't look at morality applied to the animal kingdom the way it does to human beings because – Animals don't have morals because they just, they're just animals. They just kind of, they're almost like robots, like just like running on machines and stuff. So what I'm saying is, is morality only applies in our case to human beings and possibly other beings that have uh, consciousness to discern between these two things. So that's why I wouldn't apply the same morality that you or I would have to deal with to like my old leopard tortoise from when I lived at my mom's house. You know, that thing just, it just eats its shits and fucks, it's, you know, like all animals. So I'm not talking sounds, about... Sound, sounds like humans, if you ask me. Well, we, we share certain things. Like, yeah, that's actually part of my argument for the vegan thing, actually, is that we share uh, certain attributes because we are animals. And I do agree with that. I just don't think we're as simple as just animals. And that actually gets into that whole ancient mysticism thing, but we can get to that later. Uh, what, what I'm saying is that I, because we're human beings, I feel that we're held to a higher standard of morality because... Again, like, what's prevented you from going around raping women uh, your entire life? Like, is it just the law? Or, you know, I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of, time, there are plenty of times I could have gotten away with raping a girl. I just didn't because I know it's wrong. You know, I'm assuming that well, applies well, to you too, right? The way no, I've never felt compelled to rape anybody. I've Liar. You've raped. definitely got a hard on we're thinking men, you know? Like, I, it happens to me all the ah. time. I'm just like, yeah, I probably shouldn't do that. You know, that's totally wrong. You know, it's not about the jail thing. It's just about like, yeah, I shouldn't do that, you know, because that's what your conscience is for. I mean, think about it. If morality is subjective, why would we even have a conscience in the first place? Like, why? Why would we even have that? It doesn't make any sense. You know, well, um, what, where where is your conscience located? If we dissected you, where would you find this conscience that, that that's a really good be... question? I I think it's a combination probably between my brain and my heart. I'm not sure if it's necessarily something like I could find with like a spatula or something like that. But again, where, where do you find your emotions from? You know what I mean? Like, can you, can you point to where, when you feel sad, where it is, you know, I, it, it's there. See, I feel it more in my heart, you know, but like, you can't point to where that feeling is. It's just a feeling, you know what I'm saying? See, that's kind of the problem I have with modern science. It's too materialistic where they can't explain a lot. Like they can't explain intuition or anything like that. Yeah, good. You, you just described it as just a feeling, and that's the definition of subjectivity. That's where you have to just stop. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, sure. But my point, my point is, is that your feelings can be aligned with what's true. I understand. Like, that's the thing. I understand that, like, everything I think it could, you could argue is subjective. However, you can align your thoughts with what's objective true. 
You know what I mean? Again, that was my point about I could say that two plus two is eight hundred and twelve, but it doesn't mean that it's true. No, you know what I mean? Like you well, can prove. Uh, if it, when it comes to the word truth, all I hear you doing is is stating as a fact that you have this truth, but I'm not hearing any defense of what the truth is other than it can prove what I already think. I mean, provable. Like, okay, so so here, I have two quarters right here. If I take mm -hmm. two more, how many would I have? You know? You know how many right. I have. I mean, you can say whatever you want, or you can apply okay. whatever value. But I'm, like, I'm assuming that we're, we're under, we're both human, we're both, both tuned to the same frequencies and everything <laughs> like that. So th that's my point. Like, certain behaviors are always wrong. Just like gravity. Like, you could say, well, science has proven gravity or, or gravity is objective, but you're going to fall every time. It just is what it is. <laughs> I'm trying to understand the connection <clears throat> between I've got two quarters and I should or shouldn't do something as a moral, uh, you know, there's no connection uh, okay. logically whatsoever. What, what, what I'm saying is certain behaviors mathematically, like you could, you could apply math to it, are always wrong. If rape is wrong in every situation, then it, therefore it is objective. Now, I could rape a girl and lie and say, oh, well, you know, I think that's okay. But just based by the girl's reaction, you can see that it's not okay because you broke her consent. Unless, of course, she, you know, is weird or whatever. But, like, you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? Like, try it. See what reaction. I mean, I wouldn't recommend trying it. But see what reaction you would get by going and doing that. It's always going to be a negative reaction. Didn't you yeah. just agree that if the guy who molested both of his children was uh, raped in prison, that neither of us would really care? No, I wouldn't. So then what standard are you using for saying that it's always wrong? If me and you it is wrong. guys who wouldn't rape. Well, I would say it's wrong. I just don't care I'm, as much because uh, like, because what he did, I don't feel as bad about it. You know what I mean? Like you could right. apply, like, uh, hold, certain, hold on, yeah. Yeah, hold on. I got to sure. call you on it again. You said, I don't sure. feel, and that that's the authority you keep referring to is the way you feel about it. And I, I don't object to that. I'm just saying that's subjective morality. No, no, I'm still saying if he got raped in jail, the person who raped him would be wrong. I personally By just what don't standard? By because, what standard? Because rape is always wrong. You know? How do you like, how do I know how do you convince somebody of that? But he said it's okay. Well, give me a scenario where rape would be the moral thing to do. You think that would okay, be the moral you said, thing to do? Yes. You, you said that, that murder be... you said that murder is uh, is worse in your opinion than rape. And you said it's okay I to think kill so. somebody. Okay, but you said it's okay to mm -hmm. kill somebody if they mean? rape somebody. So you, uh, your argument uh, defeats itself. That's not what I said. Saying, yeah, no, but that's not what I said. Like, like, what, what, I, what I mean is this, is that like, for example, if someone comes to attack me, right, whether it's rape or whatever the reason, I have the right to defend myself to whatever degree it becomes because I'm not sure what that attacker that's is going to do. Saying, now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you kill the person. Let, let's, say, let's say someone breaks into your home, right? But that's you crazy. And, and, you, and you're in the situation where you have the gun, you could kill the person or you could wound the person and have them taken to jail or whatever the fuck, fuck it is. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you kill them, but I would say that you have the right to do so because you have no idea what that person's capable of. Now, the people that you're talking about in jail that may or may not, not rape Sean Windingland, they have nothing to do with what happened to him and his daughters, you know what I mean? So that, that's just like an like effect of people that have people in jail. You know, lots of people get raped in jail. Is it, is, like, is it always justified? That's just what happens. Just because that's what happens doesn't necessarily mean that it's moral or not, you know? Can it be, ju can it be justified? What? Raping rape? a rapist. No, raping because it's justified. It, no, because if it's justified, then but it's not rape, it's consent. Can. That's the point. Like, if, if you no, consent I, to it, it's not rape. But killing a rapist can be? Is consent the be-all, end-all of morality? It, yeah, actually, I would say that it oh, probably is. No. I, I, that's I, I exactly what the, that's exactly what the guy who molested his two daughters said he made yeah. a video where they both said we consent yeah we or one of them did i don't know i didn't watch the video but you know that that he was using consent as the justification for objective morality and i don't right. see how that works in his kids favor well that's actually i brought this up before but that's why why i think he started making those videos because he started asking and trying to like who are these girls where he was talking to in zimbabwe or whatever it was he was trying to like explain to them the scenario because his conscience came into play 
And because his conscience came into play, he couldn't continue to lie to himself about what he was doing is wrong. So he may not have girl. said that on video, but you can tell like that. I mean, think about it. Why do you think he's filming this type of shit? You know what I mean? His conscience to make it more. I think he's filming it because he, he <coughs> sincerely believed and wanted to convince, he wanted to make a point that mm -hmm. what he was doing wasn't wrong. And that's why he made a video because he was proving that we don't understand consent you know, the way, or we don't Why did he say he was okay with that, though? Why did he say, when, when he, the girl said she wasn't interested in doing it anymore, he said he, she was, he was okay with that, you know? Because and in the no, next video, no we're also talking about a six, no like a six year old consent. girl, too, who obviously, like, you know, her brain isn't fully developed and stuff. So, I mean, I assume you just kind of assume that or whatever. But, like, I mean, would you go by the word of a child anyway? Like, I certainly wouldn't, you know? I mean, do you think, like, I mean, you think like a four year old understands morality? I, I don't. No, and I, that's why I don't appeal to consent as the only moral standard. As somebody who has subjective morals, I have a lot of standards for whether or not something is moral or not. And one well, what are those other standards? In, one of them takes into consideration uh, power and balance between people and uh, accountability and responsibility, things people don't generally talk about. You know, like uh, if you're going to have a child, it's your duty to actually raise that child up, to provide for it, to take care of it, to love it. And so mm -hmm. molest molesting that child is detrimental, not even if that child wanted to engage in sex with their father, which is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, he raised them. Even like if they, he, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, he, he, he raised them to think like that, and he raised right. them to think that, that, that there was no problem with it. And that's the power of conditioning and really right. morality we're we're raised to believe things and that's what becomes our conscience but actually so, so actually but let me bring this up uh because that's actually a really good point the thing is that's why so many soldiers suffer from ptsd because they go there and they've been brainwashed and conditioned to go and kill people from all over the planet you know and you know and do all these horrible things and they come back and they have trouble dealing with facing the truth because their conscience is still within them. I mean, for example, like, why do you think when you go into an institution like police or military, they intentionally shut down your limbic brain? Why do you think they do that? They do that because you have something within you that helps measure morality to the best that we can understand it within this objective reality. See, I understand that, like, we are, our views and stuff are subjective, but there is an objective truth, and the goal is to align yourself with that objective truth as best you can. See, I think the more successful people in life generally, not always, but generally, have aligned themselves with what it actually is, as opposed to, you know, like one of my old friends, this guy was just kind of really delusional, you know? And he just ruined his life because he just wanted to believe what he wanted to believe, and he didn't look at things for what they really are. And, you know, he ended up like losing, you know, he basically went insane because of this. Uh, that's the thing, like, I, I understand there are plenty of things that are subjective, but what I'm saying is certain behaviors are always wrong. And based on that, it's our job to align ourselves with that. Because, again, you could say whatever you want. You know, I could say that I'm going to go fly like Peter Pan tonight and tell everyone. It doesn't mean that it's true. You could, that, that's, that's kind of what I mean. You can say whatever you want, but things are provable, at least to the best that we understand in this 3D reality we inhabit. So what I'm, to, to basically finish what I'm saying is just like Sean Windingland lied to himself. And I think, I think the reason he ended up making those videos is because at some point his conscience came into play. It was just like, I can't really be doing this anymore. And that's the same thing that happens with soldiers with PTSD and stuff. Not that they rape their daughters, but so. <clears throat> well, here's, some, here's something that is uh, provable. Yeah. You say, you say you feel your conscience in your heart, right? Not necessarily. I, I think so, but I, I don't know where it is. It could be somewhere down okay. the block. You know, I don't know. You think, <laughs> you, you think that you do, right? You sure. think that's where you feel it. Well, what thinks for you? What thinks for me? My brain, I guess, does most of it. Although I, I right. also view my brain as, a, as a, um, like more of like a receiver than, um, uh, than like, my, it's like it's actually going on in my brain. I, I view my brain as like a receiver for just like the infinite all. Uh, that's, which actually gets into the whole mysticism thing, because I've had a couple of experiences, which I'll gladly tell you about if you want, uh, where like I felt like I was pulling something that wasn't like a better example would be, you know, when you're just laying there and you have a zillion thoughts going through your head about all sorts of stuff. I don't consider myself thinking about that. I consider my like it just passing through me or, or kind of you understand or not. 
Uh, I mean, that's a theory that may right. or may not be true. But right. What I, but you're, you, you do acknowledge that your brain does your reasoning, right? Yeah. So I, you like, think I, for I think your, so. <laughs> well, I think so. I'm, I'm asking you if you think for yourself or if something else is thinking for you. No, I absolutely think for myself. Uh, in terms of making decisions, though, I do think my brain... Uh, or I think everyone's brain just like, again, when you just daydream, like, is that really what you're thinking about? Or are these thoughts like passing through your brain some other way? See, that's why I think my brain is a receiver. Like, l let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. So I don't sound like a looney tune, right? Anyway, uh, I think of a lot of jokes. Like I'm like all, all day with the fucking jokes. It's just how I am constantly. Anybody that knows me in my personal life, tell you the same thing. I used to describe like, when people would say to me, Justin, like, where do you think of all this stuff? I actually always said my entire life, I don't consider myself, it's something that I thought of. It's something that like passed through my head and I was conscious enough. And the way I would describe it to them was, it was almost like it was like here and I would like sh like pull it into like physical reality. That's really honestly how I would always describe it to people. Then interestingly enough, um, what's it called, along the way, as I was doing more and more research into like what the ancient mysticisms and all that type of stuff is, that's actually the description I do where like, like this, uh, I don't know if you can see, where you have the hand up and the one down, that's actually an ancient symbol for exactly what I described that I just randomly, coincidentally came to understand in my own head with no prerequisite knowledge of that at all. So that's one of the reasons I do believe that uh, into that type of stuff where my brain is a receiver. Because I don't, like that's the same, same thing with your subconscious. It just, things pass through your head all the time, you know? I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily thinking about these things. It'd just be like, oh, wait a minute, Psh, grab a joke, and then there it is. It's, uh, now, it, now it's real, now it's in 3D. So that's kind of how I view that. I also might be wrong. I'm, I'm open to being wrong, but that's, it, to me, that was an awfully interesting coincidence, which is why I, I'm into that type of stuff. Well, this is off topic, but what if uh, what if we are this like genetic information that's passed down through biology? You Astral know, memories where, you're talking about? Yeah, where we have the memories of our ancestors or the information is stored in there and it can sure. be activated. Maybe that's part of what we are, but it's not it's coming from the outside. It's coming from within. Maybe. Right? That's that. Believe it. You ever heard of Assassin's Creed? You know, the video game series? Mm -hmm. that's that's actually what the entire series is about to tell you the truth that that's the whole idea the guy jumps in something called the animus and animus is actually i think latin or something for soul <laughs> and that that the idea is he jumps back into those ancient memories now again like also like nikola tesla uh, he he was known as probably the smartest man at least in the modern day he described what i just described that your brain is a receiver now not to downplay you by any means but like no offense i'm gonna believe nikola tesla over you or me just based on the fact that this guy fucking figured out and created everything. So to me, that's just a good piece of evidence that what I'm saying is more likely to be true than not true. Again, I could be wrong. I just don't think so. Well, te <clears throat> Tesla was kind of an interesting guy who befriended birds. And, yeah. and he obviously, w I think he was I isolated himself a lot. And sure. I uh, do too, he, actually. <laughs> he didn't, didn't have a lot of uh, human people skills and business and all that. Uh, yeah. I think that it's a reasonable thing to assume that possibly, say he concocted an imaginary friend or in his head or a psychological projection of something, maybe his creativity led him, you know, there, there's people who uh, believe things that aren't true who accomplish right. great things. So right. well, he can, was can you give me an example of who else? Like, would you mind giving me an example of who else you're talking about that like had these ridiculous beliefs that did create, you know, uh, I don't know. Let's just stick with Tesla. I mean, he had he had his own way of viewing the world that was different sure. than everybody all... else's, and he got different results than what everybody else did. But he was doing science. He was sticking to the scientific, right. you know, way of doing things. So right. I'm just I'm just saying. Uh, he, he also like didn't take. I was gonna say, he he also actually, uh, I'm sorry, he, he also uh, claimed that he possibly got communications from aliens and they were giving him the ideas. Now, that might sound crazy, but again, like, who are we to argue with the guy that figured out, like, radio waves, you know, all this stuff? Like, I mean, this guy created practically everything, which is why the government suppresses him. So, again, as crazy as that may sound to me or you, I would listen to a guy like that. See, let, let me give you a perfect example. I'll give you two great, great examples of what I'm talking about, right? I believe in the lost city of Atlantis, and I think anybody who doesn't is probably dumb. The reason this is, is simple as this. 
Plato is one of the most well-known, re well-respected human beings that ever lived. He was, everybody loves and reveres him, quotes him all the time. I see his quotes on Facebook all the time. Did you know Plato was the guy that actually brought forth the theory of the lost city of Atlantis to the public, uh, the public consciousness? Now, my, my point that I'm getting to is, why would we believe 98% of what this guy says and revere it, except that one thing? unless there's more to the story. Same thing, I'll give you one more, a very similar example with George Carlin, right? Uh, I'm a huge George Carlin fan. He, to me, he was like, a, you know, like almost like a father figure. I love that guy. Uh, and he was no, known and revered for being extremely honest and amusing, but he was notorious for being honest. Now, you can find an interview, I'll send it to you if you want, I'll, I have to find it, but there was an interview where George Carlin flat out said in front of an audience of people, they asked him, well, what would make you happy? You know, like what would make you a happy person? Because a lot of it's negativity. And he flat out said, if the alien beings that engineered us in the first place came back down and undid what they did. And he flat out said that. Now, why would this guy be completely honest about everything? And on many interviews, he said over and over again that he's not joking, he's serious about these things. Why would he lie about that one thing? People lie all the time for their own reasons. And what do you, you think his think, reason was? Um, Wouldn't that just take, discredit him? No, because people believe lies more than they believe truth. That's just human right. nature. They want to believe things that they want to believe. So really anything goes. So then why didn't you lie about everything else then? You know, why not just lie his entire career? Same thing with Plato. Why not just lie out your ass then, you know? Because you can't get people to believe lies if you only tell lies. You slip lies in with the truth, and then people believe the lie. So are you saying that basically? George, so you're saying that Plato and George Collins' plan was to basically trick the masses by giving them lots no. of knowledge and wisdom, and then lie about this one thing? Why would they do that? No, I don't know why they would or wouldn't do it. I'm not saying any of that. I, I don't. I didn't know those people. I didn't know their character. I, I don't really know what the point of this is. But take well, for instance. Let me, well, let me just take, say the point that I'm getting. That, that, yeah. Well, let me just, just to finish. The point that I'm getting to is that if if uh, someone's very well respected, very revered, and very successful, I'm going to consider what they're saying and not just dismiss something that might sound a little bit crazy to the average person who doesn't like research or, or do these things. And I'm not implying that's you. I'm just saying, like, to me, it doesn't make sense that they would be honest about 98, 99% of everything else and then just make up this far-fetched story like Tesla, like Carlin, like Plato. To me, it makes more sense that there's truth in what they're saying and that maybe I should be, we should be more open-minded open to things is what I'm saying. Because these guys were all okay. geniuses. That, that's what I well, mean. Well, if you take the the importance of believing things that other people say seriously you have to apply that logic to everybody and everything so there's sure. lots of good successful people who uh started religions i don't adhere to any religion but I, mean, I would have to say i would have to say why did you know the 60 plus people who wrote the bible why did they lie maybe oh, there was well, some truth to it but well, I, I could tell you all about that, actually. You know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, well, well, let me ask you this. And this, this just goes for anybody who watches or sees this debate. This isn't like a question specifically posed to you. But I kind of like made up a joke about this. Uh, but w what's your opinion? Do, do you think, I think all religions were made by the same people. Do you think that's like a far-fetched idea? I, yes. I think Christ, like, like to, me, to me, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, I think they were all made up by the same people. And create and basically separate it into each area like a sports team to keep everyone fighting do you think that's like a, a like a like a far-fetched belief um there was a guy named abraham who believed that he was receiving messages from somewhere else and he called yeah, it that, wasn't just that a lot of people think he, that but yeah, yeah well well he he called that god and sure. he heard he heard in his head the objective truth giver telling him that he should sacrifice his son Isaac. Yeah. So as you can see, objective morality also creates a horrible situation where you can't actually reason with people and it creates an authority that can't right. be questioned, which is why well, let me, it's let me more just dangerous. Also, let me just also throw this out though. You, you, you know the Bible in general, most of these religious books are actually symbolic allegories for, um, they're not actually supposed to be taken literally. I know many people do, but like for example, the story of Genesis, it's not actually about a snake telling a woman to eat an apple. Like you have to study the symbology of what these things actually mean and everything like that. But that's a whole other topic. And I, I agree with you that yeah, people do justify you know their things by saying they're talking to God. But again, like 
like it's objectively wrong because if the kid, you would see the kid resist being killed based on the fact that you understand that this child does not want to be killed, that's how you know it's wrong. That's why we have these senses and stuff, you know? That, that's, how we, that's how we know it. But if a higher power, if I start creating a, an authority figure outside of humans, then I can right. easily justify anything and nobody right. can question me. That's Absolutely, I completely agree with you. I, yeah, I completely agree with you, but that, that's not what I'm doing. You, you understand, like, I'm not claiming I'm getting messages from God or anything like that. I, I think that there's more to the story. I, I kind of am one of those people that believe in the whole idea of, like, consciousness and all that. That they, uh, What's it called? One of the reasons I like symbology and stuff is, uh, like, take, take um, a, like a star. Do you know what a star symbolizes? No. Some, no? Okay. Well, here, I'll give you a quick breakdown of why Satanists use an inverted star. A star symbolizes the four elements, earth, water, air, fire, on a five-pointed star, specifically a five-pointed star. The high point of the star that they never teach us because they don't want us understanding this type of stuff symbolizes and represents spirit. Uh, just the way the ancient Egyptians, right, they're hieroglyph for God, and the Egyptians were really, really far ahead uh, of, I would say, in us in a lot of ways today. Uh, they're, um, what's it called? Uh, is there something going on in the background? I hear like, uh, is there like a video on or something? No? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe it's that thing we were talking about, you know? <laughs> but it anyway. Might be me the voices. Yeah, 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 I, yeah, I hear voices. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's Vanessa. She's been telling me all my jokes all my life, you know? <laughs> but that's the way you've been. Uh, but, but anyway, where was it going? So the Egyptian hieroglyph, and, and again, the Egyptians, they put their greatest minds to the mystery of death for over 3,000 years. This country is only like 200, what, 40 years old, something like that. Anyway, where I'm going with this is the hieroglyph for God was actually a flagpole and, and with a flag because it represented the unseen power that, that's there that we can't actually see. Now, I would laugh in the face of most modern scientists and archaeologists if they think uh, the whole pyramid, I don't know if you saw the, the video I did on the pyramid, but those, they are lying through their teeth about those things because they don't want us questioning that stuff. But anyway, back to the star thing. So what I was saying is the star, the high point of the star represents spirit, which is the idea that that's what the Egyptian flagpole represented. The reason Satanists invert the star, they flip it upside down. They're, trying, they're symbolically killing that spirit. And that's why, they, that's why they do that. So I don't believe in God per se, like there's an old man in the sky, but I just kind of look at God as the life force that inhabits everything that is alive. You know, like I consider us the fifth element, like that movie, The Fifth Element. That's kind of how I view reality. <laughs> okay. I don't like well, or anything. My question is that's what you believe and that's what you think. Based on evidence. Is, not it's not just like something I made up. Okay, I think you just made it up and I didn't hear any evidence for it. What? Well, I just for example, the brain thing that I just spoke about, right? How I think my brain is a receiver. I also gave you an example of probably the smartest man who ever lived that we know of who said the exact same thing. I mean, well, you could, I could pull up documents and stuff if you want, but I mean, like, no, that, that, yeah. I know what a brain does. It receives and right. it transmits. That's what I mean, it is. So you're not, you're, not, uh, you're not getting away from the brain. You're not appealing to facts. You're appealing back to the thing that subjectivity is, the well, brain, the, the thoughts, the, the feelings. Well, okay, but like, what about my the argument for me? Uh, what, what about the pineal gland and all like the DMT in there and the people, all these spiritual experiences that people have, you know, j right. Okay. So you're, you're appealing to the brain again. Right. What's your point though? I, I agree that we have a brain. Sure. Yeah. My point? point is, is that our brains work. They, right. they receive, they receive information from the world that we live in. So when we see something that we say, wow, that I would want that to happen to me, then it's yeah. a bad thing then you, your brain makes associations or neural associations. Yeah. Well, okay, well, what the about all the out process? Of, right, no, I mean, I agree, but, like, what about all the out-of-body experiences that people have and describe virtually the same from all over the world? It's kind of like the whole, like, like just to, not to really equate this to... Okay, but, like... That, that happens you know, in the brain, too. Well, okay, how about this? I'm familiar with Graham Hancock, right? Uh, recently, I watched a video where he was explaining how he had an out-of-body experience, and they, they, the government has actually funded testing a lot of out-of-body experiences where... People were unconscious. They were unconscious the entire time. The entire time, they were clinically dead, right? And they, there's tons of evidence on this. I'll, I'll send you lots of videos. And they described what everyone in the room was wearing to a T. And this isn't like one case. This is a lot of cases. So what I'm saying is that I don't think that we have uh, a full understanding of reality the way that we want. 
I, I think what you're, you're kind of coming from a more left brain point of view where physical matter is all there is. And I don't necessarily believe that. Again, I'm open to being wrong about these things. I just don't think so. The difference is a lot of ancient people, they talked all about this. And if you study the ancients, they were way ahead of modern day scientists and stuff like that in terms of a lot of these things. I'm sorry, somebody called me and interrupted me. Um, uh, so what I was saying is in China, there are these statues, right? They have tetrahedrons under the claws of the statue. These date back thousands upon thousands of years. Now, the only way you're going to see a tetrahedron is through an electron microscope. So how do these people thousands of years before civilization really existed know about these things? Unless there's more to the story. You see, that, that's... Well, we might have had... We may have even been more advanced in the past, but it doesn't change what we're talking about. We're still talking about people with their brains thinking, doing science, looking at things. We're not getting away from uh, the, we're getting away from the topic of whether morality is subjective or objective. Mm -hmm. Well, I, not, well, I mean, I, I, all right. Well, so anyway, so right, back to the morality thing. I'm simply saying is that because certain behaviors are always wrong, this is why morality is objective in every case. That's why. Like, can you give me okay. a situation? Here's a better example. Give me a situation where you can't figure out who's right or who's wrong, and I'll do my best to figure that out based on the way I look at things. Okay. Can you give me a scenario where you just can't figure out who was right and who was wrong? Yeah. Any situation that involves more than two people where mm -hmm. another person is affected by an action, any situation it becomes dependent upon subjectivity. Otherwise, you might be doing something good for one person and it's causing harm to another. You know, you could be right. falling in, you could be falling in love with somebody and the person That's why you should... in love with you. No, 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 right. That's why I think people should really think things uh, through. No, more. That, that's the problem. People don't think things through enough. I think they should take more time and, and really think about, well, is this behavior going to affect these people down the line? I think people are in generally very short sighted. And I think that's one of the problems we face. So I, I would I would agree with that. The problem is, is that you still didn't give me a situation where we can't figure out who's who's morally wrong and who's right. Can you give me a scenario like an exact scenario where you just can't figure out who's wrong? Because I'm, sure I'm sure I can. Hold on. Vanessa's writing me a note. <laughs> Why don't you just say okay. it? Okay. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, it's all right. V Vanessa, okay. Okay. show okay. face. Say hello, okay. you know? I talk, I'm a when, nice guy. When, I, you know. <laughs> go, go oh, no. Peek you're so they can see you're your fine. No, no. Come nobody on. wants to see my face. Yeah, okay. So oh, please. when can you defend yourself? You're if not you're, even on the video. I don't Come want on. to be in the video. Okay. Just kidding. Vanessa, get in the video. Come on. There we go. So listen, there we, the happy couple. when can you defend yourself? If you're right. So you think, wait, sorry. You still there? You still there? Ah. Hello, hello. Oh, come on, Dave. That's his wife. Give him a break. Hello, hello. You guys still there? Is anybody still... Leave it to a woman, huh? Hold on, let's let's reinvite them or whatever. No, nah, it's all right. I'll take two against one. It's fine. Uh... Hang on, I got to invite them back now. Uh... I didn't do anything. I think she, maybe she like knocked over the phone. But wait, wait, hang on, Dave. Let me just finish this conversation. I'll, we we can definitely get it popping. Let me just see if I can get them back in. All right, I just reinvited him, Dave. It, Dave, we'll do we'll do one after or whatever. All right. Well, so far, while people are watching, what what do you think? Am I making sense here, or uh, you know, am I crazy? Tell me. You know, is he crazy? I just reinvited him. Hang on.
Hang on. The esoteric. Dave, all I do is the esoteric. That's like my main area of study and stuff. Bring up Passio already. Yeah, that's fine with me. Uh, hang on. Vanessa Ryan. Caleb, what do you want to know about uh, about the whole Passio thing? I know him, so it's, you know, I, I could speak on behalf of many things that he talks about if you want. Where'd he go? Damn it. Caleb, what do you want to know? Oh, here we go. Okay, okay. I'm famous. Everybody wants a piece of me. <laughs> okay, there we okay, go. That was Leave it to fault. a woman. Okay. Leave it to a woman, you know? That's why <laughs> it took so long to get it going. I couldn't Just get right. helping. Right, right, right. right. Out. Okay, so listen. So yeah. you're telling me that it's okay, right? It's okay to, in, in self-defense, you can defend yourself. Yes. Right? And you can kill somebody. You can potentially kill somebody, correct? If they're yes. trying to, let's just say they're trying to rape you. Yes. I would say, I would say whatever is necessary up until murder, well, actually not killing that person in self-defense, simply because you don't know what that person is capable of. Okay. <laughs> when? When is it okay? Let's just say, okay, the act of rape, there's long-term consequences for it, right? Right. Uh, PTSD, people end up being re-victimized repeatedly. So what happens if, let's just say, you're raped, you're, um, you know, 120 pounds, and then you have somebody who's Sounds 225. Hot. <laughs> hot. Right, okay. So, but then you have I'm somebody sorry. who's 225, and what yeah. happens is that person can't defend themselves right then. No. They're overpowered, correct? So what okay. happens if in two months after going through a court case or – you know, suffering other negative consequences, they have a mental breakdown. They go and they decide to exact their revenge then. Is that still okay? Yeah, I'd say that's okay. By the, by the person. <laughs> now, I, I, wouldn't I, recommend, I, I wouldn't recommend, I wouldn't recommend you handle it like that. But like, like let, for example, right? Uh, like, I wouldn't really have a problem. Like, l let's say the exact situation happened, right? I wouldn't have a problem with that, because again, it's the idea, if you don't start on, there won't be any, you know what I mean? It, it's the person who initiates the problem. Hey, let me give you an example, in, in schools, right? Here's a big problem they do in schools, right? With kids, with kids. If you guys get, yeah, it's all right. If, if, you, if you guys really wanna get close together and just have one, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, in, in schools, for example, um, sorry, in schools, right? When two kids get in a fight, they both get punished, but that teaches them that it, it's not okay to fight back. The only person that should get punished is the person who initiated the, the problem. Because again, it's the person who starts the problem that's wrong. The other person's just fighting back in self-defense. And that's why it's the initiator that's the, the person who's wrong. You understand? It's always who initiates the problem. Because without the person initiating it, there wouldn't be a problem. You understand? It, to me, it's just that simple. And that's what applies in, every, in all moral cases. It's who starts it. If you didn't start it, the problem would exist. It's who manifests it into physical reality. Again, there are plenty of thoughts. I've seen beautiful women. I'm like, man, I'd love to take care of that. But I don't do it because I know it's wrong. I might go up to her and be like, hey, but you know what I mean? And get shot down or whatever it may or may not be. But it's just the point. Like, that's just how it works. So okay. it's who initiates. Okay, it. but that's fine. But let me cut you off there for a second. Why to you is it wrong? Why? Why? why is, okay, let's just... Yeah, why is it wrong? Is it that you're what thinking wrong? about um, why, why is what raping? Wrong? Like you see a good woman, you see a good-looking woman. Why? Why don't you just go and rape her? Because I'm, I'm, no, why? I mean, like, give me your answer. Yes. Be because I like I would go and talk to her because I'd want to make sure that she was okay with me hopping on top of her. Because if she didn't oh. want that, and she would probably fight back, claw me, cut my dick off, and. Uh, hate me and uh you know there's a lot of there's probably an actual infinite number so of the reasons consequences. why I don't. Yeah. The consequences and also and it's you would probably and my stop conscience, to think about how and my conscience to stops me. I'm sorry? You, you my conscience probably... stops me. Good. Oh wait, hold on. I got a question. Wait. I got a question. <laughs> yeah, okay. So your conscience stops you, but you were just describing the voices in your head being like, oh yeah, I'd like to do that. And so what where did that voice come from? 
the the other the other shoulder. So I don't you've know. You got like multiple multiple personality disorder <laughs> going on here, though. Pretty if much. I, yeah. I, well, uh, have you ever studied Carl Jung or Sigmund Freud, where they talk about the the the, the, the ego and then, like the different parts of your brain, the subconscious, like the meta mm -hmm. subconscious, whatever it's called. You know, there are different Freud, facets Freud, in you. Absolutely sure. sure. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just trying to weigh what's right and wrong. Th that's exactly my point. Is that like you have a conscience so you can navigate. Like here, here's a good point is that like the word you're, conscience. You're just, calling, you're just calling any decision you think right to be your conscience, but it's all your brain and you're just- No, 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 that's, that, no, no, that's not necessarily true though. Like for example, like, like when I decide between having like a Coke or a Pepsi or a Snickers or a Milky Way, no one else's morality comes into play. It, it's when someone else's free will behavior and des desires that I'm affecting, it, that's when it's moral. You know, deciding to go okay. to a basketball game over a baseball game is not immoral. But look, look, look. So, okay, what, what you take into consideration before you go out and just do whatever you want is how somebody else is going to feel about it, right? That's something I'm sorry, that say that again? Taking... Okay, uh, so what, before you do something that's going to affect somebody else, you take into account how they're going to feel about it? Yeah. But when it's objective, it's either right or wrong. So you don't get what? the feelings, the justifications, the validation. It's either subjective or objective. And every argument presented so far has been the brain, the feelings, the my, my thoughts. You well, what does that, that you That's the definition of subjective. So, so are, you, are you saying that there's no such thing as truth? You don't think truth exists? Is that what you're getting? Are you a solipsist? Is truths. that where you're going? No, well, well, what, I well, think okay, that def they, define a truth. There are, there are true and false statements that can be made but when it comes to the universe we don't think in true or false that's something that we do is we we say oh that was a true statement like when you say that uh the universe has laws that pertain to morality to me that is a false statement that has no justifiability and you have no way to uh it, there's no uh, you, you, but you, no, but, the, but, there, but there is because you can see the reaction. That's my point. Like, take no, a, take you can a, see the reaction. You can see the reaction of another person with a brain, and you see the interaction of two subjective minds saying, "Okay, well, how do you feel about this?" You wouldn't be saying consent is that important if it was about objectivity from the universe. So, or anything so then, else. Do, do, do me a favor and define something that's true. Explain to me something that is true, because something it sounds to me true. like you don't think anything's okay. true. Uh, I what is true? That. It is true that I have a brain and that it's responsible for my thoughts. And well, what if I, I what if I feel like you don't? You is don't. It doesn't matter. Then, then right, you're right, objectively exactly. wrong. It doesn't then you're matter. Object no, 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 Bingo! No, no. Thank you. I, you just proved my you point. I'm objectively head. wrong. You just said it. I no, would be no, no, objectively no, no. wrong. You, you just no, no, said no. it. Objectively wrong. Uh, no, you don't think, dude. You're objectively wrong in regards to a statement. That doesn't mean that morality is objective. It means that he decided, you decided subjectively. You decided subjectively. So name something wrong. objective. Name something objective. I have a brain. Okay. All I right. Have fine so, codes. Well, okay, but <laughs> I could just say, I, but I could also just say, like, your argument is that because I'm deciding that what you're saying is true, it's subjective. That's what you've been arguing the whole time. I'm arguing yeah. that rape is right, uh, right. So, so then, is it objective or subjective that you have a brain? Okay, it's but I'm aligning, that I have a brain. I'm aligning my perception with the objective truth that you do have a brain. That's what I'm saying. I understand that, like my my opinions are subjective, but there is an objective truth, and it's my job to be a good person to align my perception with the objective mm -hmm. truth. That's what I mean. It's always wrong to murder someone. It's always no, it wrong. Isn't. No, you it just isn't. said it wasn't. You just said and, it wasn't. No, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me go, let me go. Here's, this is one of the big problems that most people have with this stuff, right? I know, killing and murder Kill, are different, self -defense, right? self-defense, right. Killing and murder okay. are different. No, they're self -defense. not. No. They're not. The action is, the objective action is the same. No. We're, the make, we're changed the word you so subject. that we can justify the behavior. Let me, let me explain. So, so there's no difference between Michael Myers or Jamie Lee Curtis in the Halloween movie. No, 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 the same? no, listen, please. One second, just listen. Okay. Let me point something out. Okay, <clears throat> just because okay. you decide that your action of self-defense was justified does not mean that another person's family is going to decide that. If I get raped and I subjectively decide to go and kill the person who rapes me, he never consented to it. There was never anything like that. It's still, the end result is still the same. It's still taking another human life. 
that family right. is going to say, no, it's murder. She murdered him. She could have dealt with this in a different way. She could have done this. She could have done that. But you're saying that's okay to do. It's not okay for me to send a group of my biggest guy friends to go and rape him, but it's okay to kill him. In self-defense, yes. Whatever that's happens afterwards, hey, you no, shouldn't have done that in the first place. That's the you answer to your question that you asked. Can you give me an example of being right? Or whatever. Yeah, we all agreed that you can kill somebody if they rape you, right? So that's the answer to your you question. Could. You could. I mean, you could do a lot of things. You could take a water pistol and, and go to the supermarket. I mean, there's an infinite number of things you could do in response. I'm but just no, saying. But natural law. Let me get to this. No, Let, no, no, can, no. I, can I read you the definition of, uh, this is from dictionary.net uh, pertaining to natural law. It states that killing another person is forbidden by natural law, no matter the circumstance, as it goes against the human purpose of life. Even if someone is, say, armed and breaking into another person's home, under natural law, the homeowner still does not have the right to kill that person in self-defense. It is in this way that natural law differs from actual law. That's for a legal definition. So, okay, well, but, but there's a lot of really, bunk, but there's also a lot of really bunk le legal definitions. I actually prefer the term consequentialism myself. But what, what I'm I saying is, is, again, as simple as this, when you violate someone's consent, like, do, do you believe rights exist? Like, do you think rights exist or it's just a free for all? I believe that rights exist in theory, but they don't exist in nature. So you don't think you have the right to defend yourself? It's just made up by man. You think man is the highest power in terms of deciding what's right or wrong? Man is absolutely the highest and only power that can decide what is right and wrong in nature, and we agree upon that. Well, how do you know that? I don't necessarily believe that. That also doesn't mean I feel for no, God you, either. I know, but that makes no sense. You, you just said that every living animal doesn't have what we have in regards to morality, but we do. Right. So it's unique to man. It's unique to humans. And the p best possible explanation for that is because our brains are a little bit different than it's you because know, we monkeys. understand that we have evolved okay our brains have evolved differently so what it is right. is that we understand the consequences of our own actions and even back years ago right and, there right, were still right. times That's my when point. we didn't you, but what i'm saying is you right you understand the consequences which is why you avoid certain behaviors because but the you know they're wrong are typically because you know like we why don't why why you just go around stealing somebody like, like why, we why know don't you how just go around stealing somebody. all the time we know how it's going to what why don't you hold on one sec. Why don't you go steal every time you can get away with it? Because I have my own values and principles, and so I choose not to do that. So, so are your principles are they aligned? Hold, hold on, but are, are your principles aligned with your conscience and what's right and wrong? That's why. why do, like, no, because why, I've why, been taught. Why do people see, steal? I, I wasn't taught. Why do some people steal? Uh, usually due to the fact that they're oppressed and they don't have a lot of money and they resort to it out of the oppression from government, which is a whole other topic I could go on and on about forever. So you don't, but, you don't think rich people steal? No, no, I think some of them do. And the reason I think that they do is because they're bored within their lives and they're looking for some type of other way to kind of like uh, get like a thrill out of life. I was actually right. having they this want conversation. To. They want to. Yes. So they do. Right, or certain people, yes. The I'm asking why don't you? Do. There, you know, there are other factors that come into play with things, you know what I mean? Things aren't that simple. The variables. But what I'm saying, uh, right, there are in certain there's situations. There's human variables. Yeah. yeah, I agree, there are variables exist, sure. I'm just okay, saying that it's always wrong to what rape someone. makes someplace. us human. What's that? The, the variables, that's what makes us human, okay? The emotions, um, the opinion, the justifications, the validations, and your all conscience. of those subjective things. And your conscience. Why do you think empathy. psychopaths are not looked at? Why do you think psychopaths? Oh, hold on. Yeah. Emp empathy is something that humans develop, and some people don't develop it, and that's what we call psychopaths. Right. It's, it's in like about point like oh oh one percent of the, the population, which is the whole. I disagree other... with that. So. I no, no, totally no. That's type. No, no. Type type one. There's two. There's different types of psychopathy. I there's know. Psychop was that because I've, I've researched this quite a bit uh so, so, society definitely makes people into psychopaths that's definitely true but some people are born psychopathic but i just want to get back to a point you were making earlier because you said if it's all subjective and there's really no like right or wrong so you don't see in the halloween films you don't see any difference between michael myers character and jamie lee curtis's character you don't see a difference between those two i see a, i see your straw man that i yes. never claimed why is that a straw man thing. 
Because what? you're saying, when what? you say you say, and it's not something I've said, that's the definition of a straw man. Right. You're making I didn't say that there is no right or wrong. No, I'm, I'm asking claiming, you. I'm claiming that morality is something we created. It's something that we determine if something is right or wrong based upon objective observations, but not objective truth. There's no truth claim so there's, that there's it's no objective always truth, this wrong. So there's no, no objective not, truth? There's objectively true statements and objectively untrue statements. You claiming that there's an objective truth without demonstrating it is false. Okay, you have objective, to tr objective it. truth. Gravity, objective truth. It's going to fall every time. That's objectively true. That's not my opinion. It doesn't matter. Now, I could say, I, hold, hold on, hold on. I can say that it's, it's not, but it doesn't matter because I, I can align my perception and say subjectively, no, that's not true and lie. But that's okay. being dishonest. It's always okay. going to fall every time. It's being, it's being dishonest because it's not objectively true. Gravity Bingo! That's my point. That's all I've been okay. saying. Correct. No, yes, it's not it's what you're saying. No, no, no. True. Yes. no. How are you talking? No. Yes, listen, it is. Listen, listen, listen. You're interrupting. No, it's not objectively true. It's a, it's, that's what I said. It's not objectively true. As soon as you leave the Earth's atmosphere, gravity doesn't play by the laws of what happens. How do you Earth, know? So it's not. How do you know? Because we've, because I'm not a flat earther. We've left. I'm not the a flat Earth's earther atmosphere. either. We don't know okay, that. Well, though. You've never been there. I, I'm not a flat earther either. But we, no, you don't. Absolutely. Then you, you don't understand you, gravity. Gravity is. I amazing. wouldn't claim to understand gravity. No. But what I'm saying is because you don't have an experience it yourself, you don't know that for certain. If you, if you, you might be right. If you don't understand gravity then why you are you talking understand. about it as objective truth and fact if you don't even because understand I could, it? Because I could see, it, it, again, I don't know what takes place off of this planet, so to speak on behalf of what's going on in Venus, I can't do okay. that. But How other do you do people that? do, because I've seen other people in space How do you know that they're floating telling around. You? Well, how do you know that they're telling the truth? NASA's lied to I us about your, all sorts of How stuff. do I know you're telling me the truth? About what? About gravity and how it pertains to morality. Be, be, so I'm using you, this as an example. So the, this behavior is so always the, reason, the same. Always. So the always. reason. So, so the reason you don't rape is because when you drop us, it falls to the ground. Or is that the reason I don't? The reason I don't rape is because I would feel bad doing it because I would see the response from the person Thank I was you. raping. So you just made the argument. Yes, I, yes, I'm using. You have to use your senses to understand, like, like, I'm not Helen Keller, like, I have to use the senses that I have, but just because I have senses doesn't mean reality and morality don't exist. That's the point. You can align Nobody's your perception. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We know they, hold on, hold on. you're interrupting me now. Hold, hold on, hang on, hang on. What I'm saying is you can align your perception with objective reality. And that's, it's our job to do that to the best that we can. You understand? There are certain things that are objectively true, like this. This is always going to happen. Rape is always no, going not. to be wrong. It's not. That's not always go it's not always going to happen. Can, can you give me a scenario where it won't? Yeah, I mean, we could drop that into my pool in the backyard, and it's not going to sink like that. So, I mean, not at the same there. speed, it but it will. Not, not at the speed, but it will sink. No, it'll, it'll float. Yeah, well, I got yes, a pool. We can go test start out. No, no Let, let's, let's do it. it it's top. still going to say, maybe not at the same speed. I didn't say it falls at the same speed. We can get it to the 9-11 thing if you want. But uh, that's the point. It's still going to fall. It's, there, there are certain things you can put into play, but it is always going to happen. So my point is, is that because there are certain behaviors that are always wrong, it's our job to align our perception, uh, and, it, and it is a perception, with those objective truths to get the best consequences. That's what I mean. Does that make sense? No, because it <coughs> falls what you said. So You're using objective I'm, incorrectly. Though. I'm not going to start with the premise that when you drop that, it will always fall because it's not objectively true. You don't know if it will happen in space. I happen to believe my eyes when believe. I see people floating in space. I don't believe the Earth is flat. I do believe I that we've been in space what, numerous why do you keep times. Out? I'm not a flat earther. Why do you keep bringing right, it up? You, I don't think you're this we flat. Got, we we got a Tesla car floating out in space, so you need to say I'm right. Or you're wrong. I, I'm, I'm not. Wrong. I'm not basing. I'm not. Myself. I, I'm not. I'm not using NASA or any of these these things to base my. I'm talking about NASA right now. Well, what, what Tes, I'm saying is, is I'm, I'm private... not talking about space. I'm talking about here. Who knows what's out there? None of us know. Right. I, I don't so believe NASA. A, about so a lot it's of subjective. Their stuff. So it's it's subjective to people. It's subjective to our planet. It's sub subjective so, so, so Nate, to Nate, based on age. It's subjective to everyone. So if you so if you objectively have a brain and I subjectively say no you don't, am I right? No, you're wrong. Right. The you same thing with rape and it applies to morals too. Based upon your it own applies I said I said there are 
true and false statements. I didn't accept your premise that there are true and false uh, moral imperatives that come from outer space or from God or from anything. I, I, that's well, I'm not really sure. I'm not really up. sure where they, where they come from. I, I just understand that certain behaviors are always wrong to take. And because these okay. behaviors are always wrong to take, that's what makes them objective. Now, I could lie to but myself and everyone else and say someone, it's okay, right? like Sean Windingland or whatever you want, example you want to use, but he's wrong. Why do you think? I'll just use you. I'll yeah. just your, use your example. You said it's not always wrong to kill somebody because not there's in certain situations for it. Right. Then you've like, got to throw out your argument because absolutely you just said not. it's always this and always that. No, and absolutely then you not. Make exceptions. Yeah. No, no, no. It, it's exceptions. okay. Okay, so let, let me use the Michael Myers example again. In the Halloween films, right, Michael Myers is a bloody murderer. He walks around killing everybody, right? If somebody, Jamie Lee Curtis, for example, kills him in self-defense, is she the same thing as Michael Myers? You believe no. that? Listen, no. Then we morality is objective. That. We can no, decide that. No, it isn't. That. That's not how brains should work properly. You can't decide that because you're saying it's objective. So you're saying murder is either right or wrong. Killing somebody is right or wrong, right? I'm you saying killing someone in self-defense is not the same thing as murdering them. That's that, what I'm you saying. You don't get that justification. But with it objective is. Morality. If it's why not? Why not? Rooted in fact. Because no, no, the, the, the same. what happens might be the same, but the moral intent, again, we're talking about morality. The moral intent is not the same. So Michael Myers, oh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My, oh, that's actually the entire point of Halloween, Michael Myers. He represents and symbolizes evil, right? And he goes around and butchers everyone. If somebody ends up killing Michael Myers, if he actually can, by the end of the movie, do you think they have the same moral code that Michael Myers does? No, right? No, because I don't, because I believe in subjective morality. Right. And I think that the difference is between, I do believe there are exceptions to are just, just about everything, because that's so give what me you're an doing. So give me an exception. Well, so ju do me no, a favor, wait, let justify let me Michael Myers. sentence. Sure. Let me finish one sentence, okay? Here's the, sure. what you're not getting that we're trying to explain is, whenever you're mm -hmm. saying that something is objective, you have decided it's either right or it's wrong. Taking yes, who life, else would? Whether you're you taking have to a life, yourself. we're not, we're not using legalese, okay? So we're not using the legal terms as far as like manslaughter, premeditated, even though, let me tell you, every single one of those has the same end result, and that is taking a human life. So right. you're saying- So I you don't, don't think it matters decided. why a life is taken? Like you don't, let me just, just no, to be clear. We, 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 we do you think it matters. It does matter. Why do you think that? Why do you think that? Your Jamie Lee why Curtis and Michael that? Myers thing. But why do you think that? Jamie Lee Curtis would be- Okay, because- Why do you think- This is crazy. Because we, we, we devise social constructs so that we can coexist with other people. I don't want to live in a world where somebody thinks that it's okay to walk in my house and shoot yeah. me in the head. That's logic. And logic comes from the brain. And it isn't based on anything oh. external. It's just based on common sense, which is well, not something the universe gives me. But my brain saying it wants to keep. Where do you think you got your brain from? To my where do you think you got your brain from? You're not separate from the universe. You're part of the universe. You're part of this. You came mm -hmm. from the universe. You're not the separate entity. You're the universe too. Uh, right. So right. you're making There's it like, like I'm talking about some far right. We we are the moral agency of the universe, but it's not in the universe in anywhere but us, which makes it subjective by nature. We no, are the subjective. Our moral well, listen, I, I agree with you that our perception, like the how we view things, it, it is our perception, right? But there are objective truths that exist that it's best that you align your behavior with those objective truths, or you'd be in the, let me just, let me say one more thing. Why do you think rights are called rights? Because they're based be, in what, rights behavior. That's why they're called you, rights. There is wrong no. behavior. There's not? But it's still we, changing the subject. We create language. I'm not changing any subject. We, we create language to describe things. The language doesn't give the universe its properties. We give language to things. Why do we call a dog a dog? Who knows? Who cares? It's just a word we put on it. It's not so? the, the magic thinking of like, like language creates reality and all that. It's not true. Or where, where did reality come from before we well, started? Actually, oh, oh, actually, hold on. Let me jump in here. That's actually absolutely not true. Uh, one of the reasons they take certain words out of the dictionary is because they, it actually affect, it does affect reality. That's one of the reasons. Uh, for example, when a dictator often takes over a new area, what they do is they strip that area of their language because it's easier to manipulate and control people when you get rid of certain words. That's like a known thing. Dictators do it all the time, all the time. Believe it or not, that's, you play that, that, that was that's the whole non sequitur. 
it doesn't follow the that doesn't mean anything if you well, take you, away no, a person's you, language you just, you, just said, you just said language doesn't create reality it absolutely does that was a huge point of, no, actually i'll give you no okay well actually hold the, on hold when, on, I, hold, wait, when wait, wait, wait. I say tree when i say tree it doesn't create a tree i'm describing the tree that's there correct i agree with i agree with that but what i'm saying is that language has a lot more power than you seem to want to give it cool for George Cohen, for example, in one of his stand-ups, I think in the eighties, brings up how after the first world war, it was called the 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 thing what they were the soldiers were experiencing was called shell shock. And then he changed it to battle fatigue. And then they changed it to post traumatic and then they changed it to operational exhaustion. And then they changed it to post traumatic stress disorder. And the and the, the reaction and behavior of these soldiers, they didn't get what they were given because of the language. So language is very important, actually. Uh, it's not something we should be dismissing. Uh, but like I said, again, r r regardless, I'm just trying to get uh, we'll get the point across to you that there are certain things, the, the behaviors that are always wrong. Of course, our perception, it, you know, is objective or is, is subjective. But you can we never view objective we never, things. We never agreed to your statement, and neither did you. So now, why are we proceeding like it's fact? Wait, what? What do you mean? You, ne you never agreed that there's actions that are always wrong. Other than rape, let's just give you that one. Let's I think murder is always wrong. Always wrong. Murder is no, theft. You just, theft is always wrong. How about that? You don't think murder is always wrong? I do think it is. I don't think I don't think no, killing in self-defense is murder. Yes, I do. Change, why do you? That's oh why do you think they have different but, words in court of law? Why do you think they use different you, words in court of law? What, you're going back to legalese. Words don't that's change actions. He's going back to a higher authority. If it's always and I read you the definition. What higher authority? You, what you higher, just said it's always wrong. In court, in a world of court. Murder is not murder. You're right. But here's the thing. The end result is still going to be the same damn thing. You're still taking a life. Yes, I agree with you. But because of the so initiation of the violence and the, 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 the theft and the theft of natural rights, it justifies it in certain scenarios. But that's why murder is murder and self-defense okay. is self-defense. That's why words There's exist. Two different words exist to describe them. those things. You what see? about this argument? What about the <laughs> argument? that because we don't have rights, you don't have a right to kill me. How is the, it assumes less than assuming I don't have a do I don't have, have a right to kill you. I don't have a right to kill you. That's the point, I, I don't. Right, so, so you don't have a right, then we can reach logical conclusions without appealing to rights. You have a right to be left alone mean? is I'm the not... same as saying I don't, you have a right to not be killed is the same as me saying I don't have a right to kill you. You know, it's it's just the uh, polar opposite with the exact same end game. So you're saying Which, that we oh, have that rights exist. I'm saying yes. Right, the reason, in nature. okay, yes. The reason that rights exist in nature, uh, like I like I stated before, I always use this example: the Second Amendment. I take that one personally. The reason you have a right to defend yourself is because you can, from from observing things, you can see camouflage fangs, venom claws, stingers, etc. exist. Because you can observe and understand that these things exist, that means that you have a right to fight back if something attacks you. Okay, first of all, there's this thing called the appeal to nature, which is a fallacy. You can't derive Why is that a fallacy? Ought from it because it is. It's, it's the rules of logic. Why? So if you want to be logical, because, because then I can say it's natural for people to die, so there's no harm in me killing you. It's natural for people, for animals to kill each other. Therefore, it's natural for me to kill you. It's so are you, are you a nihilist? Or are, you, are, are you a nihilist? No. Well, li no, life I'm is a, circular. The I'm circle of life is circular. <laughs> logic can't be circular. You can't justify a premise with the premise. You can't just say it is this way, so it is this way. The truth is the truth. That's not how people reach logical conclusions. Right, which is it's exactly why I gave you the example of camouflage fangs, venom claws, and stingers. I just gave you like six examples okay. of why okay. you can see that there's a, a – you a, the, maybe, maybe right's not the right word. The ability, if you prefer the word ability – if you want to use that, then fine. But the fact of the matter is, is that these things exist. So as far as I'm concerned, if something attacks me, I should be able to fight it back. What should I do? Not? Why? It's a natural so you're reaction. Taking, so you're taking things that you consider not moral agents, and you're taking their, their tools of predation that they use to kill other things and just declaring them tools of self-defense and then saying, I get my ability to uh, reason or whatever from these things it's not it's not how your logic isn't following a pattern that I yes it is i just get you you, ju you just said to me 
that uh, what's it called? I, I don't I didn't give examples, but I gave multiple examples of how I came to that conclusion. I came to the conclusion that I have the right or ability or whatever word you'd like to defend myself because camouflage fangs, uh, fangs, venom, claws, and stingers exist. The reason that I have the were right you? to or ability to were speak, whatever. Well, let me just say this. The reason I have the ability, like the First Amendment exists, is because it's not up to someone else to decide whether I can just talk or not. It's because I have a voice and I'm born with the ability to do so. If not, then who get, decides to make, who decides whether, you know, these things are, are moral or not? A group of old men that I've never met? We decide if things are moral or not together based upon how we feel about it together. What if and you were the last man you, on earth? Would, you you weren't born with any of those tools that other animals were. And so that right. to me is, so then you don't have those things. Right, but so I have an upper, I have an upper. Argument. But no, but I can because I have an upper brain and human beings are known for building tools. You ever seen like 2001 Space Odyssey? Yes, I, I, I'm for the brain. Like I'm with you. A brain is a good thing. I'm trying to use it. I, I'm just simply saying is that because I, I have the ability to do this, I can make weaponry and stuff, you know. So anyway, listen, More? listen. All right. So then we're just, I guess, not going to agree on this topic. Like we've been talking about this for a while now. Would you want to jump into to one of the other ones? Because this, this just seems to be circular. Um, you want to, sure. what, do, what do you want to talk about? The, the Paseo cult or the Darwin thing? Uh, go with the Mark cult? Go with the Mark cult. Go with the Mark cult. Right. Go ahead. Why, why do you think he's a cult leader? I'm, All right. Well, you know, I watched, I watched listening. a video the other I watched a video the other day of Mark where he was describing what cults were, and I couldn't help but notice that he changed the definition to basically, I think he knows he's a cult leader, and I think he knows that his people are his followers because he changed the name, the definition of cult to, to include including harm and taking out all the things that resembled what he's got going on. And then I saw him make a claim that... Um, when you can change language that you can basically control people, right? To some degree, yeah, I would say so, sure. So he was uh, controlling language to make people think cults are something other than his group of people. And he happened to I include basically everybody on planet Earth except for people who adhere to what he, his doctrine is. So okay, so what was, the what was the claim exactly? The, like what 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 was changed? What was the definition that that was changed? Uh, I don't know exactly what all he changed, but he he said that there has to be harm involved. Like what, it has to be are, like detrimental. Are, are you let me just ask you? Are you confusing the word cult with the word occult? Because those are two different no. things. No. Okay, so, okay. So you Mark, don't know. Mark actually has a, a number of videos where he calls people cult members. A number, like for instance, do you eat meat? Yeah. Okay, so Mark Passio calls you a cult member, but you got real mad when I called you a cult member. He has a video no. called Meat Eaters or Cult Members. Yes. Well, I, first off, I never said I agree with absolutely everything he says. Uh, I, I, what they use, what vegans use is the word carnism, and they claim that it's a religion. Uh, I would say it's a religion if you were to argue the fact that we have to eat meat, and because we've always eaten meat, um, th that, that we should continue to eat meat, and there's no other reason. I could see that. You could kind of turn anything into a religion, though. Like, I don't see eating meat as, uh, as a religion. It's just something human beings have always done. However, if somebody were to argue that we have to eat meat or, the re you know, or whatever, uh, I could say that that be could become a religion, yeah. Like anything, though. You know, like, I could say the same thing about veganism or virtually anything else. You know, like, there are people that are religious about Nintendo. I actually hate Nintendo fanboys that only play Nintendo games. You see, I play a wide array of video games. I'm not religious about it. So I, I could agree with that, that there are definitely meat eaters that act religious about it. I mainly eat fish, though, personally. I like fish. <laughs> but, uh, Me too. Okay, so, yeah, it's good stuff. Okay, so why else do you think he's a cult leader? Okay, because the definition of cult applies yeah. to him and his group. It's but you can say that about any group. group. No, you can't. No? You, can, you can't. No. Unfortunately, you can't. And you can never say that about individuals. You can never say that somebody who's advocating people to think for themselves, uh, to not adhere to laws. You know, one of the signs of a cult well, leader Marco is they... Marco always says that you should research all of this yourself and not believe him. He say, makes a point to say that all the time. All the time. Okay. Then I suggest that his followers research the definition of a cult, and I will read it to you. It's a small group of people with novel beliefs like 
the world is ran by shape-shifting reptilians and we're being well, I don't actually believe that. By, he doesn't actually teach that. Yeah. Well, I just seen he was, he was giving out stickers or something that said the world is ran by reptiles or something. I would He definitely that, he I definitely didn't it. do that. That's like a David Icke thing. Although at, at the same at the same time too, uh, what's it called? Uh, do you do you not understand the reptile thing? Because I can actually explain that. And no, I don't necessarily think the planet is run by reptiles. But like, there's actually a lot of interesting evidence which why those people do think that. As crazy as that might sound, I, I, I can go into depth if you want. It's pretty interesting, actually. Not interesting. No, I no, I, I'm familiar with it. I've done my research. Uh, I do, I reject yeah. the claim that. The, that the world is ran by reptiles, but uh, yeah, I don't think it is either. But you never know, you know. <laughs> but but would you would you agree or disagree that his um, his teachings are not something that like it's hidden knowledge, right? It's something that the <clears throat> well, no, he, that's he not common. Regularly, he actually regularly explains that it's not hidden knowledge. It's only it's only been it's been occulted throughout history. Which that's what like Freemasonry, Kabbalah, Rosicrucianism is. Like if you join a Freemasonic Lodge, they'll eventually teach you about some of this information. This information is all for free on the internet. It's in books. It's all over the place. The problem is, is that the government and these, these people in power, social engineers, have an agenda to dissuade people from looking into this type of stuff. Kind of like how you just brought up the reptile thing and you didn't really want to hear about it. That would be the, like, it was like for example, when I heard about, wait a minute, it's run by reptiles? I was really interested to hear well, why the hell do yeah. you think that? I, because I'm I've heard about it. Yeah, I'm oh, open-minded okay. too. I've heard okay, so it. Okay, so can you tell I've, me a little bit about it? Can, can you tell me I a little could, bit about I, it? I what, could, what do you know about wanna... it? What, what do you know about it? Obvi can I talk? <laughs> yeah. Obviously, obviously, you believe that the world is ran by reptiles, or you wouldn't no, be arguing with me about it. No, no, you no, 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 no. I'm trying to make so, the point that I don't think you've actually done the research. I think you're using that as a talking point. And I want to know how much you know about that. That way I know that if you did your homework or not. I don't think the world is run by reptiles, no. Well, do you want to talk about the Anunnaki or do you want to talk? What, sure, what do you want I to can talk, talk about? all about them. I love the Anunnaki. I know you, I know you, I know oh, you yeah. can, but I, want to, I know that we'll go off a lot of rabbit trails and I want to stick but to- But that gets Mark into the Cassio occult though, but okay, sure, 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 okay. Okay, I mean, the word occult has the word cult in it, right? Right, so does, so does culture though. Culture, cult, right. your, your cult. Right. That describes everyone okay. alive. Here, here's what my objective is as an anarchist, is that I want to present the most simple explanation that appeals to the most people so that we can do the most good for the world. And okay. I don't think that what Mark Passio is doing resembles that at all. I think that if, you know, the, the books and the videos that I've been recommended, they're eight hours long and I've seen a pile of books this tall and I think nobody in the world is who's, you know, a normal person is going to be persuaded by this or look into it. So we need a better thing like, hey, do you want me to initiate force against you? No. Okay, I won't initiate, initiate force with you and we will have a mutual agreement based on common sense alone. Yeah. So well, we don't I, need all of that. Well, I, I think normal people are the problem, though. That, I think that's absolutely the problem is normal people. I think normal people are the reason everything sucks. I think that too, way too many people are just concerned with fitting in and just being like everyone else. And not enough people are able to entertain things like, like, for example, if you told me like there really was a flying spaghetti monster out there and you were sincere and like I took it, like, like I like took your word seriously, I'd look into it. I really would. I might not agree with you, but like I'd at least look into it. I think most people laugh at the idea of like something like the Anunnaki or something like that. And I think there's an absolute boatload of evidence to almost, almost prove it. You know what I mean? Now, again, I'm not telling you it's definitely true. But again, I believe it was Aristotle who said the measure of intelligence is to be able to entertain an idea without readily accepting or dismissing it. So I have a lot of right. information in my head that I just entertain. I don't necessarily believe or ascribe to. Uh, the same thing with like atheism. To me, that's just another religion. I don't know what's going on, and I'm perfectly okay with that. And I just entertain ideas. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. I don't really specifically have a set thing that I absolutely like a religion. Like if evidence were to come out, and to completely debunk, absolutely outright debunk the Anunnaki thing, I would just go with that. I just think from the evidence that I've researched, there's a lot of interesting good evidence for that. So um, what, what I'm saying is, basically in a nutshell, what I'm saying is, I, I, don't, I think the problem is the general public who doesn't, uh, isn't looking, is just concerned with fitting in and being part of the flock, which I'm not. And if you've seen any of my videos, you can probably tell that. 
But um, in terms in terms of Mark and his eight hour lectures and stuff, you have to understand like there's there's a lot of information. Like I like Mark and Larkin Rose a lot for different reasons. I think Larkin does a great job at what he does. I think he does, keeps it short, sweet, and he just stays at that boundary, trying to get people into the anarchist community. And I think we absolutely need people like that. I consider Mark someone, he's more of a, a researcher. So to me, he's somebody that is willing to go into these unpopular topics that people don't really want to discuss. And for someone who's been researching conspiracy theories since I was 19, uh, that's one of the reasons I'm a fan of his, because he's willing to talk about things where most people would laugh at. And uh, I don't think all of them are laughable, you know? So that, that's kind of why I'm a fan of his. Okay, but he's teaching <clears throat> that his ideas are laws, right? Which ideas? All of them. The natural no, law. No, that's absolutely not true. No, no. When he says natural law, he's just saying basically what I'm saying to you, which is something, again, I did not learn from him. I've understood since childhood that certain things are always wrong. It's always wrong to steal. Again, someone like Robin Hood, who the, the, the ruling elite stole from the public, he just took back what was everyone else's. I don't look at that as theft because it didn't belong to them in the first place. But if I broke into your house later tonight and stole your stuff, I'd be objectively wrong. You know, there's, there's always another way I could, let's say, made money or get a job. The problem is people are always justifying immoral behavior. And again, they'll say that it's okay, but it isn't just like Sean Windingland. Like, well, you could say whatever you want, but it doesn't mean to make that it true. Certain things are always wrong. Murder, rape, theft, which are really the same thing. You're just, it's all theft. When you kill someone, you've stolen their life. When you rape someone, you've stolen their ability to consent. It's just theft is what it comes down to. Are you a fan of George Carlin by any chance? <clears throat> yeah. Do, do you ever see his stand up on the Ten Commandments? Because he actually, that's what it's about. He breaks down how the Ten Commandments are really just the same thing. Don't steal. That's <clears> it. <throat> and in the end, he, does, he has an extra commandment to be funny. But he's trying to teach you natural law the same way. It's just the idea. Don't be dishonest. Don't steal. Even being dishonest, you're stealing someone's trust. That's it. That's natural law in a nutshell. Just don't be dishonest. That's it. That's all it is. Well, you, you know, when the Ten Commandments were given out, one of them said, do not kill, right? Yeah. Well, as soon, Thou as, Moses as, soon as Moses returned with the tablets, he found uh, the people worshiping a golden calf, and he was instructed by God to kill everyone who was worshiping the calf. The calf. So... How do you reconcile but that's, that? But that's just but that that's just that Bible story. I, I, have you ever studied astro theology by any chance? That's another subject I'm pretty big on. What was that? Have you studied astro theology by any chance? Like like I don't listen to the Bible or go by the Bible. I was just using that example of George Carlin. Like I'm not like a Bible guy or anything like that. Not never was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So th so that was just an example of him trying to explain how the Ten Commandments are really just the same thing. You know, don't steal, don't be dishonest. That's it. Because again, you can do whatever you want on, within the laws of nature, but again, certain behaviors are objectively wrong. That, that's the only point that I'm trying to convey. Being dishonest is always wrong. Always, you know? Uh, being no, dishonest give me, isn't all... Give me a situation where it's not. Okay, so we're talking about lying. Imagine right. if I was being drafted for war and, okay, stop right there. State... Bingo. Hold on. Bingo. Right. Against your will. Against your will. So they already broke natural law. They already broke it by forcing you with violence to do something. So then, it's, then it doesn't matter because they initiated it. There you go. See? That's, that's circular that's a perfect logic. Example. So that's, no, it's not. That's a perfectly flawless example of what I mean. They were dishonest. They were immoral. They are trying to force you with a death threat to go kill so other you... people. So you're saying when somebody does, hold on, you're saying when somebody does does something wrong, that gives you a moral right to do something in retaliation, right? Wait, say that again. I'm sorry. Just so you know, my phone battery's at like 10%, so uh, this is probably going to go off soon. Um, what I'm saying is, if someone again, like the same thing with with uh, with the with the rape thing, you can do whatever it takes up to get yourself out of that situation because they initiated and broke natural law by being dishonest. Someone drafting you, that's, they're not asking you, they're telling you, hey, listen, if you don't go kill people for us, we're gonna throw you in jail or kill you or whatever it takes. So right off the bat, they already were dishonest and broke natural law. So whatever happens after, hey, you shouldn't have did it. That's my point. That's why morality is objective. Because if people would stop doing dishonest and moral things, there, the situations afterwards would never occur. 
It's who started it. It's who broke natural law. Consequ again. <clears throat> All right, you believe in cause and, cause and effect, conse consequentialism, whatever you said. Okay, where <clears throat> did we come up with the concept of forgiveness? Where did who come up with it? Who, whoever you get your natural laws from. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean. Like again, uh, yeah. Well, I'm, so what are you asking me? I'm not, where did we come up with it? I'm asking. Say you punched me in the face. And right. I had the mor moral right to punch you in the face back. But instead, I said, you know, this guy's probably got something going on in his life, and he's taking it out on me. I'm going to forgive you. You have the right to do Where that. Did... And I, I would say that makes you a pretty mature person, actually. Like, for example, I've had, people fuck, I, I've had people fuck me over in life, and I just let it go. It happens all the time. My ex-girlfriend did me fucking dirty, bro. And I just let it go. I could run around. I could go after and look for her and do all sorts of stuff. But I'm just like, eh. It's not worth it. It's my choice. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say that forgiveness comes unnaturally to people, but it's moral? No, I think forgiveness usually comes uh, due to introspection and reflection upon, like, is it worth it or not? You know what I mean? Like, again, like, I'm not, like, you could do whatever you want. If somebody, you know, like, let's say, God forbid, you know, rape your sister or something like that, you could choose to forgive them. I don't know if you would or not, but that's on you. You know what I mean? Um, you know. So it's so it's it's up to me whether I kill somebody or if I turn the other cheek. That's entirely my prerogative, right? Yeah. Again, you're going to say that's subjective, but that doesn't change the fact that they objectively wronged you in the first place, which led you to. Again, I agree. Subjective things exist. I'm not trying to say there's no subjectivity. I'm just saying that there are objective rules that are always wrong. And if you go against that, whatever happens, hey, you shouldn't have done that in the first place. That's been my entire point that I've always been saying. You see what I mean? Again, the example you gave about the draft, they're not asking, they're, that's a threat. And any ticket, same thing, any ticket that's given out is a potential death threat. That's not an opinion that can be proven. So right off the bat, they're breaking natural law by doing that. So that's why, like, if somebody does something in retaliation, someone writes you a ticket, hey, you shouldn't have threatened them in the first place. You know what I mean? Now, yeah. they, let's, let's say they go after somebody who murdered someone or something like that. Well, then, hey, you broke natural law, and those are the consequences that you're going to suffer. Don't do it in the first place. That's why it's always wrong. Of course, you know, but I have to make yeah. when, when you say natural law, you're literally just describing what humans agree with and, and you're not giving any evidence at all that it's a part of nature, that nature wills that. You're not giving any supporting evidence other than, yeah, my brain says that's true. I like that idea. It makes sense. Of course well, I, I give, I've given Are, you plenty of, I've given you plenty of evidence. For example, like if I walk up to a woman on the street with a knife and it, it, she thinks I'm going to attack her, I'm going to get the same reaction from every woman. They're not going to like that every single time. It's objectively true. Try it as a social no. experiment. No? It, but, try it. It only... It only applies to subjective beings. It doesn't apply to anything in Well, nature. what's an objective being? Can, can, you, can you define what an objective being is? What's an objective being? It, it only applies to human beings who have subjective minds, who have feelings, who have preferences, who have thoughts. And that's why it's subjective, because that's the definition of subjective. And it eliminates objectivity as an option because objectivity only applies to facts. Yes, but again, there are objective. See, this is what you don't seem to be getting. There are objective truths that exist that are always the same. They're just always the same. I understand I'm going to use my perception with subjectivity to align my perception with those objective truths. And that's how you should, that's how to be a good person. That's what I'm trying to explain. You use your conscience. You never, you never <laughs> answered why a conscience exists in the first place. You just asked me where it was from. W regardless of where it comes from, why do you think we even have a conscience? Why do you think a conscience exists? Well, <clears throat> I believe that a conscience is your brain telling you what you think. And people have good consciences and bad consciences. And you can name the functions of your brain, whatever you want. But yeah. you're not changing the fact that it is your brain doing all but, the work. I, but I, I never like I never said it wasn't your brain. I'm just saying that like it, um, things take place in your brain. Sure. I'm not sure if it's solely your brain. But like I said, like, why do you think so many soldiers suffer PTSD and regret what they're doing in the first place? It's because their conscience came into play, and even though they did what they did. And at the time, they would have told you what they were doing is right. But eventually their conscience came into play. 
Why would we even have that ability if, it did, if, if objectivity didn't exist? If objectivity didn't exist, there would be no need for a conscience in the first place. You see? The, it, it defies the, our, the evolution of our brain to think that killing our own species is somehow advantageous either for ourselves or for others. It's nonsensical. So that causes a problem with our brain, which tries to make sense out of everything. Right. That's right. That's the goal. My brain, I'm trying to make sense out of everything. And I, with my brain, I've come to understand that there are certain things that are always wrong, which would make them objective. Now, like I've stated over and over again, it's my job to use what I guess if subjective is the word you want to use to align my perception with those objective truths. That's what I mean. Like, I understand, like, I could choose to do whatever I want. But again, that's why you have a conscience. That's why you have these abilities to discern between right and wrong. I mean, it would just be a free for all. If, 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 so, if, if there was no truth that existed or there were no objectivity, it, everything would just be an absolute free-for-all. You know what I mean? Like, ah, you know, the reason... No, no, no. no. no? A, lot, a lot of your <clears throat> arguments are the, are the arguments that statists make saying why we need government. Because if people, oh. if, we didn't have gov if we didn't have government, people would just run around raping each other. Or, or you know, that's, if everybody not... thought for them... Hold on. Okay. If, everybody thought, if everybody thought for themselves, that would be anarchy wouldn't it no but that's that's not the same thing first off a conscience is something that's built into you or whatever you want to call it it's not the same thing as government which is an external monarchy these aren't the same things for example doesn't your conscience tell you that government is immoral that's you're an anarchist conscience. right it didn't tell me that most of my life it, no it, it well, because of why well, I... all because of why because of the indoctrination and stuff like that right yeah and then i right. indoctrinated okay. myself so, so and then right. I, so, and then yeah. And then I indoctrinated myself into the belief of anarchists when I listened to what anarchists had to say. And I said, yeah, that makes sense to me now. But I've held every political position you could imagine at some point in my life. Which really? time was see, I right? Well, see, see, I actually have and I actually was never, uh, never believed in government, even when I was a child. Uh, that has a lot more to do with uh, my like like my, my upbringing and stuff like that. But I, I never bought into the fucking nonsense. The fact of the matter so, is that, yeah. Aren't, aren't you more likely to still be indoctrinated since you haven't changed your mind in your entire life about what seems like anything? Well, I've changed my mind about certain things plenty of times. Like, for example, like uh, uh, the first time I played Legend of Zelda, I remember thinking I was obsessed with Sonic 2. And I really had to admit to myself, oh, my God, I like this better than Sonic 2. But it was like painful for me to do so. So I, I know what you're talking about in terms of ego and stuff like that. What, what, what I'm saying is, is just it ba basically is that uh, uh, wait, I lost my train of thought. You're talking about, uh, what was your question again? I'm sorry, what's my train of thought? Oh, uh, <laughs> daydreaming. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, wait, 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 wait. You were saying, um, oh, am I indoctrinated myself? No, no, no. What I'm saying is the government, they need to indoctrinate people. That's why when you go into the police and military, they have boot camps and stuff like that. The reason they do that is because they have to beat the conscience, the moral compass for compassion out of you. That's why they do that. And again, that. That's kind of how I feel when I'm trying to understand a, a very simple concept and somebody sends me an eight hour video and says, Mark says, Mark says, and I have to go like, do I really want to watch eight hours of a guy talking or am I literally brainwashing myself? Am I being indoctrinated into something that somebody can't just say, here's a good argument. You know, like it only took one question for me to become an anarchist when, when my brother asked what? me. Which was what? Oh, uh, shit. Sure. I don't remember. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, it could have been that simple of a question then. Well, the, the well, fact of the matter is, just because, like, just because, I mean, there are plenty of uh, scientific lectures that, like, that are hours and hours long. Like, what does it matter if the guy guy puts on a long lecture or not? You know what I mean? Like, who cares? Because, because I've watched, because I've watched entire videos of his where it was literally just basic psychological manipulation tactics, like saying, well, like, what video? Whole, well, like, I don't specific. know, probably. What, I don't, I'm not a fanboy. I don't know what it, I don't really. Well, I mean, you said you watched it recently. You can't even give me an example out of an eight hour lecture. You can't even give me one I example. I can, but uh, the cult. All right, so give me one example. Rather, yeah, eight hours. The, the, mo the most dangerous cult or something. I don't know. I get them all confused. I'm not a fanboy. Like I said, do okay. you want to hear what, what I derived from it or no? Well, well, sure. I'm just, I, I'm just wanting an example of what you're talking. I mean, like I said, you just said Tell they're eight hour lectures, and you recently watched them. You can't even give me one example. Like, all right, what's you know, that seems a little far fetched. Well, I was going to give you an example, but I think you were asking for like a title or something for some reason. I'm not. Oh, okay, sure what so what's the example? So give me the example. Okay, well, 
when he's describing all of humanity as basically stupid and immoral, all of it, except for the people who adhere to his doctrine, which is a very small percentage of people, he, he's creating an us versus them mentality. And yeah. I, I'm not, yes. Yeah, so I could agree with that. Part of, but, but, so, but, so is, but so is, but so is every, but so is everyone that's an anarchist because we are against the government. We are against the people. We're not those. I don't look at them as our enemies per se. Also, I, I will admit, Mark is very no, no. preachy. I, I can agree he's with not, that. He's not just talking about people in government. He's talking about a hundred percent of atheists are in a cult. Ninety percent of Christians are in a cult or are, are stupid and immoral. You know, he's he's taking every group there is. People who eat meat anybody who's ever worked for the government, all these people, which happens to almost equate to all of humanity, is in a cult. So you literally have to believe that the only way to not be in a cult is to join Mark Passio's thing that's set up exactly like a cult. But, 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 also, but also, Mark's a huge fan of a lot of other people he regularly talks about, like Michael Tessarion and John Anthony West and, and Robert Bouval. And, uh, you know, I could go on and on. And he, he tells people you should research these people. Yeah. All, all he's trying to say is that that basically, yes, the human race has been brainwashed by the ruling elite all over since the dawn of time. And I absolutely wholeheartedly agree with that. You wouldn't agree with that? I you think know? that Mark, Mark is censoring dissent because he doesn't want anybody to really question him. And you've told me he doesn't debate anybody. He blocks all of his YouTube comments. He's not somebody who's, but a who's lot of engaging in a dialogue. Well, okay. You know, well, people uh, have something no, to hide. Right. People, well, hold on, the, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. The guy is trying to convince you that the world is controlled and that information is being censored. And when I go to look, I only see one person censoring information. And it's not YouTube. It's not the powers that be. It's Mark Passio is censoring people from being able to even say what they think on his stuff. Can uh, okay, tell me well, why that is? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what's it called? Well, for one, he's not the only person that censors stuff. Lots of people censor stuff. But secondly, uh, if you actually like listen to his stuff and whatever, he explains regularly. He's not the type of person that's trying to reach the general public because he's angry and he's frustrated. So what he's trying to do is find people, someone like maybe like you or someone like me, who already understands the principles of, well, I, I get it, but the principles of anarchism or whatever, and basically have, explain a lot of these, these deep-rooted like, uh, occult information to us to go explain because he knows he's not there for the, uh, for the general public. Also, one of the reasons he doesn't engage in YouTube comments is he's not the type of person that wants to sit there and argue. I don't really either. I mean, I entertain you more out of respect than I do most people. But if, if someone's just going to like sit there and troll me, I might make a comment back or two and then just let it go. Because again, no one ever, I, I, think about it. How many, how long have you been arguing with people on Facebook? Have you ever changed anyone's mind through a text conversation? Honestly? Yeah. Re really? Yeah. I, I've, really? Who? Well, my mind was changed by arguing with people on Facebook about a lot well, of who things. Though? So I don't understand. Because I, I remember the name of the person. Myself. Who I myself. Oh, okay. I can vouch well, for myself. Okay. So with all the arguing that you've done with people, because you go into some really long-winded posts, have you ever got anybody to be like, hey, Justin Ryan, Ryan is right? And, I'm, you know, I, I haven't. I've done it better in live conversation like this. But that's why Mark puts on presentations. That's why he has eight-hour presentations, because he feels it's the best way for people to learn. And because, like in that, for example, that Cosmic Abandonment video, because a lot of that information has been bedumped in the blah, blah, been debunked by mainstream science he's not interested in people that don't want this stuff to possibly be true to just get in there and start fumbling up he just wants to let people hey just take there i didn't hear nothing <laughs> phone call uh but what i was saying is he he puts up these lectures and stuff to let you you decide whether you think it's true or not and look into it yourself as opposed to having trolls in the comments just being like no this isn't true uh, like for a lot of people do that it's, it's not an uncommon thing and because a lot of this information has essentially been debunked by mainstream he does that's the thing he just wants you to look into it yourself it's not really that crazy I don't think that makes him a cult leader you think anybody that blocks anyone is a cult leader i block people you think i'm a cult I don't know. Uh, you're cut. You're cutting out a lot, but um, I think anybody who blocks everybody is is 
trying to sell he, somebody some bullshit. But but he but he doesn't block everybody. I I, I have like uh, like a thousand mutual friends with him. He doesn't block everyone. You know, he just blocked he you because block. you came at him. He because no. because of the way he you came at him. No. no, he blocks everybody on YouTube because he he doesn't block his followers or he wouldn't be a good cult leader. That's my point. No, no, he blocks he only, comment. He he blocks comments. You anybody could watch it. Why? Well, I just told you because he doesn't want pe he wants people to let the decision make the decisions themselves without having people that uh, take the cosmic abandonment video right? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you, okay. Take that cosmic abandonment video right? That's the thing about the Anunnaki right? Mainstream will debunk the shit out of that right? But if you look into like Robert Bouval, John Anthony West, Brian Forrester, J.J. Ainsworth, and many other people, they'll tell you it's true. Now, the fact of the matter is because mainstream isn't interested in that type of information, he doesn't want people that just don't even want to entertain this for a moment, kind of like we seen earlier with the reptile thing, to just come and be like, oh, it's all bullshit. He just wants to let people make up their own minds for themselves. And I don't really see anything wrong with that. That's not personally how I do it. But again, I, he, you, he's not entitled to do that. Why not? Because the truth doesn't blush. And <coughs> if you have something <coughs> true and you, and you want to share it with the world, you right. don't censor the world from accessing it, and you don't make an us versus them, where it's 2% yeah. of the entire world versus everybody else, and they wind up thinking they're smart, smarter than 98% of the world, and all these like elitist things that are you know, s signs that you're in a cult. Yeah. You don't do that if you're, if you're not, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's okay. Do you, consider you Larkin, do, do you consider Larkin Rose a cult leader, too? Because I know he's blocked a few people. Do you consider Larkin a what cult leader, too? Well, I, I know a few people that Larkin Rose blocked. Do you consider a cult, him a cult leader, too? Or is it just no, I don't, I don't. I don't consider blocking people. I think Larkin's proving that he's trying to get his message out to everyone in the world. I think that's the difference between Mark Passio and Larkin Rose. And right. a number of other differences. But, but Mark is too. He posts these videos publicly. He just doesn't want people fighting in the comments. He was actually, I was on a conference call because I'm one of the admins of one of his groups. And he was going off about all the infighting uh, in one of his own groups about all, all this nonsense. It's just to avoid people bickering and fighting and just let the video and the information let people decide based off of that. It's not really that complicated. And I kind of agree with it to some degree. Again, well, that might not be, yeah. Maybe that's why the powers that be censor our information to just keep us from bickering. <laughs> but that that would be one of the arguments that they use. Actually, Metal Gear Solid Two actually brought that up. Yeah. Uh, but do you but do you, but you yeah. But you recognize that government is a cult, right? The belief uh, in government. And yeah. I I I mean, sure. I, I guess we could use that word. Yeah. Absolutely. Why not? Sure. Okay, so when when I say Mark is a cult leader for doing the exact same thing the government does, where's the disconnect? Because Mark isn't making violent threats if I don't listen to him that's going to come to my house and take all of my stuff or anything like that. You know what I mean? So right. That, that, right. But, Where but he's, there, just, he's just there, putting out information. And if you like it, great. If not, hey, don't worry about it. Like, here's what I would recommend that you do, right? Because, again, like, you, the way you initially interacted with the guy, clearly he's, he's just going to be like, oh, I don't have any time for this guy. If you say made, like, a short video asking a few questions, make, like, a one-minute-long one video – asking him to address what you're saying, he probably would. But like, again, you came off condescending, saying he's in a cult, making a picture, tagging me, saying he's my handler. No, I mean, you did though. Like, why don't you try another way? You know, maybe, maybe that way. The guy, he's a pissed off, angry guy. What do you want me to tell you? You know what I mean? And he, that, that's how he comes off. So he, maybe he's not willing to entertain people he considers trolls. I mean, is that that crazy? Doesn't seem that crazy to me. No, but his method of using, uh, psychological manipulation is uh i called him a cult leader because he is a cult leader well, what, what was the manipulation again what was the manipulation well when he says that you're immoral if you don't agree with his opinion and that you're stupid Which if you don't agree with his opinion but, on, but a lot of say, people say that you, on, that, you've said on, that too. on natural law if you don't believe that nature has a law and by the way when a leader of a cult says whatever he thinks, he calls it a law every time. Why is that? There but is he, no but, evidence for natural but, but law. He didn't, but that's the thing. He didn't make or coin the term natural law. It's an ancient right. he, thing. 
he re he redefined it because I read you what natural law was in the dictionary and it wasn't anything just like when he just defined what a cult was it wasn't anything like the dictionary definition right of you, you know you know dictionaries have different definitions right I, I grew up on Webster yeah. Street so yeah okay well there you yeah, go and, right and they all and they all have Mark Passio's picture in them no I didn't I don't well I'd like to see that that's kind of interesting but yeah dictionaries oh they have lots of definitions things get redefined over time he also have said uh, and I personally don't really even like the term natural law I prefer consequentialism or I prefer uh, cause and effect because that's really all of it all it is the problem when you say natural law people think you're talking about the Darwinian theory of evolution which um is not so I actually think Mark should probably stop calling it natural law personally but again that's up that's on his decision uh, and I don't think he's going to block me or anything for that either. <laughs> when it when it comes to morals, you can't actually follow laws and call yourself moral because if you're doing something because it's a law, it's not coming from you or your heart. So, yeah. well, no, no, I, th that's the thing. I, I actually don't really like the term law either. You know what I mean? Because like, like I said, I, like the same thing with um, what we were talking about earlier. I don't think law is like the greatest uh, word because it gets confusing. I'm just saying, like I've said over and over again, there are certain behaviors that are always wrong. You want to call them laws? Great. I don't really care what you call them. I just recognize there are certain things that are always immoral, and I avoid doing those things. And that's all he's trying to say. And that's all mo a lot of us are trying to say, is that there, you should never rape people. You should never be dishonest. Do the best you can to avoid those things. That's really, you want to simple uh, his message simply? That's it. Just don't be a dick. You know what I mean? That's it. Again, it's... <laughs> <laughs> if people have trouble, this is, people have trouble understanding, uh, this is why he goes into such depth and detail in a lot of these presentations and stuff. So hey, again, sure. Why, why exactly do I have to quit being a dick when Mark's uh, 10 times the dick I am? I'm confused as to why I can't be a dick to the guy who's a dick to everybody. Oh, no, you absolutely can. And that's your right to do that. But it's also his right to block you. I agree. Oh, like, I don't. Absolutely. I don't. I don't care that he blocked me because I'm not his follower. I don't care what he has to say. I don't respect sure. anything that he said. And I, I personally think well, how do you, that I'd how do you know you don't respect? Him. How do you know you don't respect anything he I said if you've only listened to sound bites? You know what I mean? He said quite a bit. What I, <laughs> right. And I don't want to hear any more because I'd rather live in a world with government where they're made of people who can be questioned than a world where anarchy takes over and everyone follows Mark Passio's law. Nobody can question it because it's just the truth and that circular logic. You can't, you have terrible people doing terrible things when they believe they're doing the right things. And that's why being able to question humans is important, especially in an anarchist situation. But, but it, it's, it's not that you can't, it's not that you can't question him. It's just, like I said, the way you, you postulated the question to him probably turn the guy off. I haven't spoken to him since then. But when I do, he'll probably just be like, yeah, that guy's an asshole, didn't feel like entertained because of the way you presented yourself. If you presented yourself in a much more like, hey, uh, I got a question about this. Would you mind elaborating? He probably would have answered. You know what I mean? He's not a dick to me, I, you know? I didn't want, I didn't ask any questions of Mark and I don't have any questions of Mark because he's not an authority figure. He's right. I never said that being. he. I, ne I never said that he was. And and also, he regularly also talks about how he doesn't want followers. He wants people he considers equals that understand moral behavior. And that's it. You know, if if you listen, I, to more I do. I do understand moral behavior, and that's why I've made a very good case for moral moral behavior. And I can explain it without appealing to things that I can't demonstrate don't exist. And so that's why. But, I but think uh, that we what, what I said. But what I said does exist because if you take it, a blade and you walk up to anybody, you're going to get a reaction that they don't like that. Therefore, it's objective. I, that is, that's proof. That's objective proof. Take a knife and approach somebody and really, you don't think so? Try as a social no, experiment. No, no. See what happens. No, I, I understand your, your premise is flawed. If I ah. walk up to somebody, if I walk up to somebody and they don't like it, that's the part that you're leaving out. They don't like it. That's why it's so. Why don't they like it? That morality pertains to what people like and dislike. Why don't they subjectively. like Subjectively. Why don't they like it? Because pain it, because hurts. Because it makes them feel a right. certain way. It makes them right. feel a certain way. Now, is, is, pain, is pain a positive or a negative thing? Pain is a negative response. Bingo. That you, ne it's right. something in, that in you right. brain. Right. That's fine that it's in your brain. You keep bringing it up. Right. Because pain is a negative response. Any action that goes against natural law 
will have negative consequences. That's why it's consequentialism or no, cause and effect. No. You just it's proved my point. You, don't stab you just proved my point. No, yeah, you did. You totally people, did. People no. get pleasure from doing, from raping. People get pleasure from that. The I rapist. The wrong. rapist does. Yes, because people, the rapist is the one people. being harmed. No, What's that? but you don't have to stab somebody and they don't have to feel pain for them to still feel afraid. And fear is what drives people to react. And so that fear is a subjective. Yes, fear is, fear is, a, right, is a negative response. Else could be. It's still right. subjective. Fear, it's a, right, fear is a negative response. That's my point. Because of the negative. But it's a subjective response. You could say anything is subjective. Yes. That the, you, can, you can say anything is subjective. The point is, if it's always a negative it response, is. it's subjective. Just the way two plus two is objectively four. If every no, time the response, no. yes, yes. If the response is always negative, it's objective. You can walk up to a 250-pound guy. He won't be afraid of you. You walk up I am to me, I might pounds. be because I'm half your size. It is subjective. Wait, say that again. You can walk up to a 250-pound guy that might not give a shit if you walk up to him. But you yeah. can walk up to me, and it might make the, the fear response a little bit stronger. Now, see, well, why, why, why would you be afraid? Why would you be afraid? There's not always going to be fear. It doesn't matter because if it appeals to emotion, then it's subjective by definition. Right. The argument's over. Yeah, yeah, so because conceded. because they weren't. It, it, yeah, I understand situations and certain things apply. Like for example, if I if I walked up to a, a you know 120 pound girl in a dark alley as opposed to walked up to a 300 pound weightlifter, I think. Excuse me, I think my shit's gonna die. Um, it's pretty damn subjective. Yeah, in that situation, but I didn't threaten anybody. No. Just because, hold on, just, hold on, hold on. Just because the girl is paranoid that something bad might happen because she knows she's not able to defend herself doesn't mean that, that's not immoral. Uh, that's just her situation. It, the action is what makes it immoral. You know, if you, you being paranoid, I mean, there are plenty of paranoid alley, people. I can guarantee you I'm going to defend myself. Yeah, so I'm sorry, what was that? Thing. What was that? I said, I, if a guy that's twice my size walks up to me in a dark alley, I can guarantee you they walk up too fast. I'm going to try and defend myself. And here's the right. reason why. And you should. Because it does, it's not paranoid. That's ruling out anybody's right. actual. Well, what are you, what are you doing process. in a dark that's alley ridiculous. in the first place? See, see what, what are you doing? Uh, what's called what? reality? Did you just ask, what am I doing in a dark alley in the first place? My God, did you just use the, the rape validation thing? Are you kidding me? Now, that is like the most no, no, I didn't say anything like that. No, 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 hold on. Yes, no, no, I didn't did. say. What were you no. doing in a dark alley in the first place? That was yeah. Your well, I, well I would, I would ask. I would. What, what I'm saying is, well, I would what ask. What was she why, wearing whenever why, she got? Why are you raped? yelling at me? Why are you yelling? No, that is uh, so crazy. That is the most ridiculous response I've ever heard. No, no. Let me just let me finish what I'm saying. What I what I mean is like Ugh, I'm not sure why you I ended up in a dark alley shit. in the first place. I'm not saying it justifies anything. I'm just asking like maybe you you shouldn't like find yourself in a weird situation like that. That way you don't get scared in the first place. I'm not justifying rape or she she mad at me like I don't. What, what did I what did I say that was so What did I say that was so crazy? I think you asked her what she was wearing. <laughs> I totally didn't. I just I didn't really see what. Well, all right. What what I meant was. In that situation, uh, what's it called? Like, I wouldn't put myself in that situation in the first place. I'm not justifying that it's okay. I'm just saying that, like, you no. might wonder yes, why you're in a dark alley in the first place. Hey, well, Justin. Yeah. Can, yeah. Justin. Sure. Can, can, you, can you tell me what you think humans value more than their feelings? What humans value more than their feelings? I don't yeah. know. I never really thought about that. Um, well, all right, yeah, I'll give you, you know what, you know what I value more than, than my own feelings? Um, the, the continuation of, hu here we, yeah, it's almost dead. The continuation of human being success as a species so we don't get taken out um, above my feelings. Like, so, like uh, someone who's not afraid of death, for example, uh, I think they put that above their own feelings and stuff. So I guess that would be a good way to do it. Someone who goes against all odds to uh, prove a point or something. So that's how you feel about that? Yeah, I guess. I'd have to think more in depth about it, maybe, but on the fly, sure. So you're, you're, I would say, as a statement of fact, that feelings are the most important thing human beings care about. That, there's nothing I can imagine that... But that's just that, how you uh, feel. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Just, right. And it's just it's how all subjective. of us feel. And, right. And that is a, how are we supposed to? How source. are we supposed to figure things out without using our own senses? You have to use your senses. 
What are feelings? Are Dude, but you ask me, I mean, the, I, I just can't, I don't think that he's even capable of having a conversation because of the fact that he could say, what are you doing in a dark alley in the first place is literally the well, most she, ridiculous response I've ever heard. Why did she get so mad about that? Well, okay, just, because just please, it is such well, a please don't yell at me. Please, hold on, please, 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 please don't yell at me. Action. Well, please don't yell at me. I wasn't justifying anything. I was just going to say, if you find yourself, you should probably not do your best to not find yourself in that situation in the first place. I wasn't trying oh, to offend you or anything. That that statement right there is ridiculous. You it's, shouldn't find yourself in that. No, but it's it's, it's, it's like the same thing. Situation. Like you shouldn't get into a car with a drunk driver. Like like why oh is that so offensive? Oh my god! Why no, is it so offensive? Absolutely, that is such a bullshit. You're, you're telling somebody why? to take responsibility. I'm telling yeah. you're telling me to take responsibility for somebody else's behavior, and that is bullshit. You no, I'm not. No, no, I'm not just. I'm not just. No, no, no. I'm not justifying what they're doing. I'm and simply saying that, that, like, question. Be, because I'm trying to explain. That's you keep cutting. You, you keep cutting me asked. off. What if somebody has you, to walk home you, from work? You, you keep cutting me off. Well, okay. I would. Okay. I, I instead. Oh, well, okay. Let me let me finish. I would say if you had to walk home from work instead of going down the dark alley, I'd go around the next block. Why is that so offensive? Right, and so would I, but what, what if, if somebody else doesn't have there? a chance? Yeah, what if, there, what if somebody walks out and just decides well, there's a girl walking The rapist is always Some wrong. I'm not justifying the, uh, the rapist is always wrong. I'm not justifying the rapist. I don't you understand. you never asked that question prior to. That's bullshit. That's you, like asking a girl that got raped, well, what were you wearing? Well, why were you there? That is a bullshit response, and it doesn't give But that's not, but that's not what I'm, but that's not what I'm, but, no, 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 you're trying, ah, that's not what I'm trying to say. That's what's dangerous about your thoughts. No, because no, 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 you're, no, you can ask that question, you, you won't even let me talk, you, can say to a girl, you won't even let me talk, well, you don't have I'm not justifying it, I'm just simply saying that, somebody raping you. that, listen, I'm just saying that, uh, you, it, listen, if there's a drunk driver, you probably shouldn't get in the car with them, it doesn't make it okay if they crash and you get hurt, just the same way that if you walk down a dark alley and get raped, it's not, yet. I'm not saying it's okay, I'm just saying that you might want to avoid walking down dark alleys, you might want to avoid getting cars with drunk drivers. That's not offensive. It you makes might, perfect sense. Yeah. Right. That's you all might, I'm saying. This is where that's the all, problem lies. You're with like your yelling argument. at me. Like, what? That's all I'm saying. You're not let me finish. The problem in your argument is that you might not want to do that, but on the off chance that you do have to, or that, you know, Why would you have, have to? to live in a home. What situation? Give me a situation you where know? you have to. Give Little me a situation kids you have to. have to live in a home with a parent that abuses them. This shit happens. You don't ask why were you there in the first place. You don't ask a teenager, why did you, you know, do I this left. before you got attacked? I left. You, you're going to do that? I, le I, I did. Have? I left. So if they kill somebody after that, are you going to say, well, it was kind of your fault. You no. shouldn't have killed and that I, person. No, and I, ne and I never was. I was never trying That's to say that. That's not logical. I, I, but I, I was never trying to say that. You like, you're like harping on this point. All I'm saying is that, again, if you see a dark alley, you should avoid it. I don't even know how we got into this. It was just like a like something I said. Like I'm you not. Brought that's, it up. <clears throat> well, I, I, all right. Well, regardless, because the, the fear point, is a response. The, the fear is a response. The, uh, the, the point isn't the, okay. The point isn't the dark alley. I'm just saying that people you shouldn't rape people. It's wrong. However, if you can avoid putting yourself in a situation with rapists around, it would probably be best to avoid. How that. do you know? Do rapists wear a name tag? That is uh, well, the dumbest response I've ever heard. I'm not joking. I cannot so understand what why do you think dark? Why do you think dark alleys? Why do you think dark alleys have you, a bad I'm, reputation? You use a dark you know? alley as a reference. I didn't. Yes. When you okay. Say, well, you're continuing to I'm use it. I'm telling you that how someone reacts to a situation, you're asking me, why am I getting mad? I'm getting mad because I've had an experience where I was out in public with friends, ended up getting raped, and my reaction, your reaction to me telling you that, would be well. What were you doing there? How are you going to tell me what my reaction is? That's absolutely horrible. No, no, no. I, I, that's not what I'm saying. Like we've completely gone off topic. All I was trying to say, uh, uh, it, it, yeah, okay. I'm not justifying anything. I'm just saying if you know you can avoid again getting in a car with a drunk driver or something like that, or walking down dark alleys that are notorious for being dangerous. Don't do it. I'm not justifying the action of the rapist. That's ridiculous. I this think is, they're just using that to talk over me. You take yeah. care of that. I can't. This is why, uh, this is why subjective, val subjective morality matters because it considers other people and it considers how other people feel. And you don't need more than that. That's all you need. But name something that doesn't affect other people. Everything affects other people. No matter every single action you take affects some type of butterfly effect on someone else. 
yeah, because subjectivity matters. But objectively, your argument, it doesn't, it doesn't have any evidence. And but it I get no, but it, but it does though. Camouflage fangs, venom claws, stingers. That, that's a, the fact that you have a conscience. No. That's that, that. That is that, yes, it is. The, define evidence. Define evidence ev is evidence is you're a person and I'm a person. And because I recognize your face and mine, I have empathy for you. Just the way I, I recognize I camouflage fangs, venom claws, and stingers exist. I don't actually know you're a them. person. You could be a lizard. You maybe you unzip your car. I don't believe that. But I'm just saying, like, I gave you multiple examples, multiple examples from but, multiple angles. You, I, you totally did. You You're just saying that I didn't subjectively. You see? No, the, I, I, I gave you a, a response to everything you said because there was an explanation for all of your illustrations. Okay. But what well, I'm listen. telling you is empathy is something that we either feel or we don't. And it's something that you teach or you don't learn. But that is what you call the conscious. It's conditioning. It's training. It's, it's learning to recognize that other people have the value that you place on yourself. Okay, well, listen, I, I got to wrap this up. I'll just end with this one last question for you. And then, and then I got to go. My thing's going to die. If morality is subjective, wouldn't that oh. be objectively true? Wouldn't it? I'll let you. Wouldn't no. it? No, then explain. No. If morality uh, is, object what? is subjective, wouldn't that objectively be true? No. Explain because you made a, a truth claim. Claims can be either true or false, but it doesn't pertain yeah. to whether or not something is objective. Yeah, you're telling me that morality is subjective. Well, if you're right, wouldn't that be objectively true? You're <laughs> telling me subjectively what you believe, and you want me to tell you that it's true objectively. No, no, you're telling me that morality is subjective. So if you're right, wouldn't that be objectively true? I should have just said this in the first place, but no. it's a really good question. No, because no, because I've never used, I don't use.